Okay, good morning, everybody. Go ahead and take your seats, please. So I understand um, <clears throat> Ms. Jones is uh, having car trouble and um, she's working the, her way this way. We do have our entire jury here, however, so where can we go? We'll obviously we have to postpone uh, cross-examination until she gets here. What, who, who can we proceed with now in terms of witnesses? Okay. So what can we accomplish in the next hour and a half then? Well, not quite hour and a half, hour and 20. Okay, sure. <coughs>
All right, so ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a little bit of a delay. We do have uh, at least, we hope, one witness who will be here at 9 o'clock, maybe as many as three, so we should be able to uh, uh, continue up at 9 o'clock, but it's going to be uh, 40, uh, what, 42 minutes until that happens. So, all right, so we'll take a recess until our next witness is ready. Um, is both are both sides okay with that? Now, if a break, I mean, they are. It's cramped in there. That jury room is not very large. Not in spite of the fact that we frequently have large juries. Um, either side opposed to them stepping outside the courthouse if they wish, so long as they are accompanied by a deputy or two. I, I don't have to judge them. Even if they're not accompanied, All right. Well, no, they're going to be accompanied by a deputy or two. All right. Very well. So give them that option, Mike, okay? If they want to. I mean, if they want to hang out in there, that's fine, but it's, I wouldn't. It's so cramped. All right, thank you. All right, we're in recess until our next uh, witness has appeared. Thanks, Judge. I'll let you know about the witness. Thank you. My court is in recess until approximately 9 o'clock.
I come to order, quarters back in session. Okay, everybody, go ahead and take your seats. A couple of... I just saw that, yeah. Thank you. All right, Ms. Perlet is back now, so we can uh, we can begin. The um, are several things I have to address. First of all, for everyone in the courtroom, everyone in the courtroom, if you have a, a telephone, or, you know, an iPhone, a smartphone of any kind, or any kind of communication device, or anything that can take a photograph or make a recording, it must be off, not silent. It must be off. No one is to take any pictures in this courtroom other than the press, and I will get to that in just a moment. And, um, so, no pictures whatsoever, no recordings whatsoever. If I see, or if one of my deputies sees that that is being done, I will take action, folks. And that means potential contempt, and contempt means potential fine and or uh, jail time. So, if you're inclined to try to take a picture, or sneak a picture, or sneak a, an audio recording, don't even think about it. If you do, you're going to be sorry with the, uh, with the consequences. Second... Um, if our jury uh, goes outside, no one is to be talking to them. That's why they're going to be accompanied by the press. I'm sorry, by uh, deputies. And that includes that no one talking to them includes the press. No one's going to be talking to the jury, including the press. Furthermore, no photographs of any juror members, no recordings of any juror members. They shouldn't be talking about the case, and they shouldn't be uh, recorded, uh, and they shouldn't be photographed while they're outside the courthouse. All right. Um, now, in terms of uh, photographs, there has been a request uh, to take images of images. That is to say, a photograph of photographs that, uh, or video that has already been admitted into evidence. Um, the argument is, uh, from the press, that that is now part of the public record. I really can't find any fault with that argument. I think, I think it's accurate. Um, is either side uh, opposed to members of the press taking images of either stills or images of uh, still photographs that have already been admitted into evidence? And if so, what's the legal basis for that argue, that objection? Okay, defense, Ms. Perlet, uh, Perlet says no objection from the defense. State? One moment, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, you can't tell the press what to do with the photos, but. Um, gotcha. I, I know. I've on the record that it's quite sensitive. It would be difficult um, if that particular photo was publicized. In, um, I don't know. 
And I have never seen a photo of that nature published in any legitimate um, news, news um, source. So I suspect that that's not going to be an issue. Uh, so what would you, what, uh, uh, I forgot. What exhibit number is that? You used it during openings, I think. Oh, no, you used it during direct examination of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, yeah. I just want to make sure our clerk knows. 57, all right, so if that's the one, assuming you all are correct and that's the one, let me say 57. Yeah, I, I saw it already. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, so whichever member of the press was uh, seeking permission to, okay, you got it. You may take uh, some images of, uh, of those with the exception of uh, 57. All right, uh, anything else we need to address now? All right, every under, everyone understands the ground rules here. I'm very, very serious about this. No images of the uh, members of the jury at all. No contact with the members of the jury at all by anyone. All right. Okay, and now it's uh, eight thirty-five. Hopefully, we'll. Her tire has been changed. Okay. And um, her tire has been changed. I, about ten minutes ago, my assistant told me that she was done. She's in route. Oh, perfect. All right. Hopefully, uh, then by nine o'clock we can get rolling again. Okay. All right. Is there something? Else? She gets here, and we're all set up. I'll let you know. Perfect. All right. Thanks. We're in recess, folks. All right. Court is in recess.
Thank you very much. Well,
Who's our next witness? Is uh, Ms. Jones here yet? Okay. All right. All right, let's uh, let's move with the medic then. All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, please. But that's okay. We can work towards getting the medic. Let's bring the jury in. We got to make up some ground here. Some time. All right, welcome back, folks. Everyone take your seats. Um, first, let me apologize to the jury. Many of you have been here for more than an hour. Um, I've been here for a lot more than an hour, but we're, uh, we're just now finally getting ready to go, and it's, I apologize for the delay. All right, who's the state's next witness? Yes, Your Honor, the state calls Lieutenant Ryan Gornall. Okay, thank you. solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Okay, as soon as you're comfortable, will you please say and spell your first and your last name for the record? Ryan, Ryan Gornall, R-Y-A-N, G-O-R, N A L L. All right. Thank you very much. You may inquire, Mr. Classy. Thank you, Rob. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Gornall, uh, what do you do for a living? I work for Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, currently a captain. Okay. How long have you been working with that agency? Um, almost 16 years. Okay. What type of uh, training do you need uh, to get to do the type of job that you're doing right now? Um, well, before getting hired, we do EMT, uh, fire academy, and also paramedic. Uh, certifications to get hired on and then there's always continuous um, training that we do um, throughout the department medical and fire wise okay and when you started back 16 years ago what, what how did you start out with the agency uh, what position, what position? Uh, you get hired as a firefighter EMT okay. and you said you're a captain now correct okay. I want to take you back uh, to April 7th 2021 what position did you have if it was any different at that point with fire rescue at that time, I was a lieutenant. And what are your primary responsibilities when we're in 2021 as a EMT? Okay, so as a lieutenant, um, I was in charge of the, the rescue truck, the transport uh, vehicles that take patients to the hospital, basically. So uh, typically, we're a three-person unit, and I would be in charge of that, that unit. Okay. Now, speaking about April 7th, 2021, uh, were you on duty that day? Yes. And were you called out to assist uh, with medical intervention uh, for a person at 545 West Jasmine Drive? Correct. Okay. And did you respond to that scene? Yes. Okay. Who went with you 
uh, to go to that location? Um, well, my crew, and then I believe our engine crew, um, and also an EMS captain, and uh, several deputies were there. Um, and I think that's about it. Okay. And do you recall approximately what time you got to 545 West Jasmine Drive? Um, I believe it was shortly after midnight. Okay. Um, and when you got to that scene at 545 West Jasmine Drive, uh, who did you see? Who did you treat when you got there? Um, I remember there being several deputies on the scene already, and then I remember seeing a, a male in the front yard um, kind of being cared for by some, some of the deputies on scene. Um, okay. And so that male that you saw uh, in that area, was he lying down? Was he sitting? Do you remember? I remember him sitting upright, um, you know, kind of in a, in a little bit of distress, but he was sitting upright. He wasn't, uh, like, flailed out on the ground or anything. Okay. Uh, and was this a man by the name of Tyler Robinson? Correct. Okay. And uh, you spoke about it, and I think it's obvious, but was he unconscious, semi-conscious, awake and alert? He, he was awake and alert. Okay. Uh, so once you get there... Um, what do you start doing in terms of medical intervention with Mr. Robinson? Um, so we get there. We see that he's awake and alert, which is obviously a good thing um, when we get there. So um, uh, we see a couple of the multiple gunshot wounds to his back. Um, we with, with patients like this, we typically like to move fast and get them to the hospital. So I believe we were only on scene for a couple of minutes. Um, we put him on our stretcher, we put him in the back of our truck, and we try to get going as soon as possible. We take vital signs, um, and that's pretty much what we do as paramedics. We, we get vital signs and we, we treat those. If they're out of line with, um, you know, normal vital signs, then we can treat those, um, appropriately. Okay. Now, you mentioned, uh, gunshot wounds, uh, that you noticed. Do you remember, as you sit here today, exactly where you noticed those gunshot wounds? I do. I remember them being on the back. Um, I think two, one to the upper right shoulder or, or back area, and then maybe, uh, and then I believe one to the lower right back area. Okay. Now, in terms of specifics, is there anything that could help you remember exactly where you noticed that those things were, those gunshot wounds? Um, just uh, according to my report. Um, and now what, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to ask the question. Uh, in terms of the first gunshot wound that you noticed, do you remember exactly where it was on his body in terms of right, left, shoulder, area, as you sit here right now? I remember it being on the right side. That's right. what I remember. Was it in the uh, back right side, front right side of his shoulder? I remember it being on the back right side. Um, and then in terms of additional gunshot wounds, do you remember anything about the, his right middle back? Uh, yes, I believe, I believe he had two gunshot wounds, one to the upper right back shoulder and then one to the middle or lower back right side. Okay. And in terms of those two gunshots that we just mentioned, in, ter in terms of your training and experience, did they appear to you to be entry wounds or exit wounds? They, they appeared to be entry wounds. And did you happen to notice an exit wound anywhere uh, in terms of his body? Yeah, I believe we saw an exit wound on the on the front left um, abdomen area. Okay. Um, and what about an entrance wound near his lower left side? Entrance he, or exit? Uh, exit. Or excuse me, entry, yes. entry wound on his entry lower wound. Left. Yeah, I, I believe he had one entry wound to the front left and then also an exit wound in that kind of similar area. And in terms of how much he was bleeding, would you characterize it as he wasn't bleeding, minimal bleeding, maximum bleeding? What was it? M minimal bleeding. Okay. Uh, so tell me exactly how you would uh, treat those types of wounds or what you did do, in fact, in this case, to treat those wounds to get him to the hospital. Right. So with minimal bleeding, um, we put occlusive dressings on. Um, I'll stop you right there. Can you just describe uh, for us what occlusive? Means? Sure. So um, occlusive dressings are kind of like plastic um, bandages, if you will. They, we put them over the wounds. Um, Anytime someone's shot in the torso area, we're concerned with um, their lungs being hit. So it kind of just covers up that area so that the lungs can still function properly, um, go in and out. 
And um, if you have that hole there, then they, they they would not be able to function properly. So that's why we put the occlusive dressings on when we're, and especially when we're not worried with bleeding, which there was minimal bleeding. Um, we just put those occlusive dressings over the uh, gunshot wounds. Okay. What about either IVs or oxygen masks, anything like that as well? Yeah, uh, we started multiple IVs. It's standard um, protocol for a trauma patient like this. Um, give them fluids just in case he has internal bleeding. Um, we put them on uh, oxygen mask with high flow oxygen. Um, I believe we also gave him uh, pain medicine um, towards the end of our transport. Um, and just continued to monitor, monitor his vital signs, which I believe remained um, pretty stable throughout the incident. Um, and then do you remember approximately what time you were able to get him to uh, the hospital, St. Mary's? Um, I, I don't know the time exactly. I know it was a pretty uh, – our, our time with the patient was very quick. Um, the location where the incident happened and the, the general station where I work at is very close. I think it's within three miles, I think, the transport was. So, um, like I said, with trauma patients, we try to get in and off the scene – our standard is under 10 minutes. I don't even think we were on scene for that long with this patient. And then our quick uh, three-mile transport, um, I think 10 to 15 minutes, we probably had this patient in our care. Okay. So and from your memory, do you think it was sometime around 12.30 a.m. that you were able to get him to St. Mary's Hospital? Uh, yeah, around that time, yes. And then once you bring a patient like this to the hospital and he's dropped off in their care, is there any other steps or any other involvement that you had in this specific case? Um, no, we radio into the hospital. Um, this, this patient was a trauma alert, so there's certain things that the hospitals prepare for when we get there. Um, we go to the trauma room. We turn the patient over to the trauma team that's waiting for us. We give them you know, a rundown of what we did, our care, um, and, and that's basically it. Yes, sir. Just for clarification, uh, now Captain Cornell. Uh, so, for when you were treating Mr. Robinson, you saw what appeared in your training experience to be two entry wounds in his back right area. Correct. Correct. Okay. And then you saw one exit wound to it. No, there's uh, overruled. Go ahead. Uh, and there was an exit wound on his left lower abdominal area, right? Correct. And then lastly, there was an entry wound to his lower, left lower side area. It is. I can rephrase. Freeze. Yep. Sustain, rephrase. What, if any, entry wounds did you see um, on the left lower side area? I believe there was one to his left lower abdomen area. Thank you very much. Defense may have some questions for you, all right? Sure. Who's going to do the cross? Okay, Mr. Shiner, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please do. Good morning, Captain uh, Gornell. How are you? Good morning. Well, thank you. Good. All right. Um, you, you treat everybody in Palm Beach County who needs your services, right? Correct. Doesn't matter if the person is a little child or someone who's a terrorist uh, trying to blow up the airport, hypothetically, if they're injured. You provide <clears throat> services to help people, right? Absolutely. You don't make judgments about the patients at all, right? No. And do you have any way of knowing if the – well, let me ask you this. When you get on the scene, is the young man that you're helping have no shirt on? I believe he had no shirt on, correct. All right. Do you know if he had a gun in his pocket? I do not believe he had a gun in his pocket. And that's something the police would check before you get there probably? Most likely, yes. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. All right. Do you remember if he was wearing uh, sweatpants? Or pants? Uh, I believe he had pants on. I don't. I don't remember if there were sweatpants or shorts or. I would have remembered if he was naked or in boxers or something. But you remember anything in his pockets at all? Front pockets? No, I do not. 
No notes at all to say whether you had anything or not have anything? I do not. All right. Did, did you cut the pants off him or one of the other paramedics? That, it would be standard practice to do that. I can't recall if we actually did that on this patient, though. Okay. Uh, but normally you would do that mm. if someone may have injuries that you need. Uh, to yes, we would expose the patient to check for other injuries. Okay. You said this particular patient, Tyler Robinson, when you got there, he's uh, sitting up, right? Correct. So that means his behind's on the floor and just sitting up on the ground? Correct. And he was awake and alert was your words? Correct. When you say moderate distress, what, what's the difference between severe or slight? I mean, what's the difference? How do you term it? Uh, it's just, I mean, you could tell that he was injured and in pain. Um, I mean, no distress would obviously be someone sitting up, you know, with, with nothing going on. Um, severe would be maybe someone like crying out or yelling or, um, and I guess that's subjective to whoever's interpreting it. Do you know if any of the wounds had fragments of a bullet as opposed to a bullet going through that maybe something, maybe this bullet may have hit a metal object first before the fragments may have hit him? Uh, no, I had no indication of that, no. You have an indication there was a solid bullet that went in his back? Uh, I, I mean, I can't answer that, no. You don't have that kind of expertise, do you? No. All right, so you can't tell the story if it was a fragment that may have hit another object that struck him, like a graze wound? No. Or a direct hit? You, you don't know. No, we, we go there strictly. We're medical. We treat the patient. We treat their wounds. Uh, he, he had what appeared to be gunshot wounds, holes in his torso. We treat that. We're not worried with what kind of bullet or if it hit metal first or anything like that. You do this every day. Is it a little surprising someone with these kind of wounds would be sitting up and able to talk and be in moderate distress? Uh, not necessarily. It's uh, every call, every patient is different. Um, it, it just depends on where it, I guess, travels throughout the body um, once it hits the body. Um, so it's not atypical. This gentleman, uh, this young man you're, you're, you're checking, he's not a young kid, right? He's, he's an adult. He's an adult, correct. 21 that was reported to you, right? Correct. So you consider him a man? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> he didn't have any injuries on his face, did he? Not that I remember. You don't remember any kind of injuries on his hands or his upper torso other than the bullet wounds we just talked about. In other words, you had no indication he just got beat up, do you? I, I didn't know. I do not re recall uh, thinking that, no. You're going to put that in your notes, right? Right. Nothing in your report reflects anything like that, right? Correct. doesn't look like to you that he was just in a major fist fight or leg kicking fight just looks like he had some wounds that you described, right? Correct. Okay. You, you've seen people, obviously, probably many times that you report bar fights, domestic fights, and you see they have injuries from getting into a fist fight, right? Absolutely. Kicked by another human being. Correct. No indication in this case that happened. From Not that I recall, no. Saw. Right. And nothing in your notes to refresh your memory that it happened, right? Correct. Okay. You said your uh, where you work is real close to St. Mary's. Correct. Where I was working when this incident happened. Yes. Okay. And obviously, you're familiar with St. Mary's. You're probably there every day. Correct. Okay. When you're driving down US One, is that how you went from this scene? Do you remember from you, the US One to Broadway? To um, I don't believe. I don't remember. I don't remember absolutely which way we took. I was in the back. I don't drive to the hospital, but I don't think we would take that specific route there. How would you normally go? I, I believe we would go back towards Dixie and head south from there because that's the, the road that St. Mary's is on. Okay, so you'd stay in Dixie and go straight down? But typically, that's the way we would go, yes. you ever respond to calls and, and take US-1 that turns into Broadway to get to St. Mary's? I mean, it could happen, yeah, no, not any specific calls that I remember, but okay. it could happen. just depends on where we're at when the call happens. Are you familiar with any hospital signs of showing civilians that there's a hospital off of Broadway or, or US-1? I don't know specifically, but I know most hospitals do have the blue hospital signs around the area to let people know where the hospitals are, yes. And you probably don't pay attention because you obviously know where the hospitals are. Right. Okay. And once uh, once you put him in the transport to take him to the hospital, he was still alert and oriented? Correct. 
And it has in the report, it says mental status, normal baseline. What does that mean, normal baseline? Uh, just normal for the patient. He can answer questions. Normally we ask people, uh, you know, their name, where they're at, uh, maybe the year. If they answer those questions correctly, then they have normal mentation as far as we're concerned. All right, and it says neurological normal baseline. Is that similar, that their brain is working properly? Right, they can answer normal questions appropriately. Did, you, did he tell you this young man, or did you ask him what happened? Sorry, could you repeat that? Did you ask this man what happened, why he got these wounds? Um, no, not that I remember. We, like I said, we typically don't get into that. Um, we were just there. We let the police do their detective work and try to figure out what, why this may have happened or what happened. But we're just we're treating the patient. And you can't tell this jury if this man was sitting down when he got these injuries, if he was crouched by a door, possibly pointing a gun. You, you don't know, right? I would have no idea. Have no idea if this was a deliberate act or a self-defense act. You don't know that. No. All right, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Mr. Shiner. Any redirect? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, great. Is there any reason why, Do uh, I'm sorry, why uh, Captain Gornall can't go on about his day? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Uh, watch your step. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Okay, who's the state's next witness? Judge, before we get uh, back to uh, the witness from yesterday, yeah. uh, for stipulation of the parties, okay. All right, and you said there's no objection? No objection. All right, just, wonderful. Just, he said the word select. I'd like to use the word part of the record. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Partial, okay. An excerpt from the records for uh, treatment St. Mary's by of Tyler Robinson, right? Yep. All right, and that's eight. State 9? Number 9. All right, thank you. Number 9. That's Sounds six. like a Beatles song to me. All right. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, just... Yes. Okay. Yes, it should. Yes. All right. Very well. And I take it there's no objection to that, right? That's correct. All right. Thank you. Let's bring her in, please. All right, Ms. Uh, Jones. Uh, all right, Ms. Edwards, you may uh, continue the direct examination of Ms. Jones. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Morning. Yes, I apologize to the jury as well as the judge. I know you guys are on a time limit, but um, something happened with my vehicle. Okay, okay. so uh, thankfully the vehicle got fixed and you're here. Thank yeah. you. Um, so last evening when we left off, we were talking about a series of text messages that you got from Tarini, and you said that you did not take her seriously to mean that your brothers would be in danger if they went over there, your brother and his friends. Correct. Um, did you know whether or not Mr. Rudolph had any firearms? Um, yes. And how many firearms did Mr. Rudolph have? Um, two that I know of. I know he had an AR-15, and I know he had, like, a regular handgun. <clears throat> how familiar are you with firearms? Um, do you know sort of the make, model, anything like that? Not really, to be 100% honest. So you knew one was a handgun, meaning it would be held in the 
Record, Correct. Shorter gun. And then you said one was sort of a rifle type. You said AR-15, but you're not sure if that's the make or model. Yeah, and he's always said something about like a drum. Like I know he had a drum for the AR-15, but not really educated in that aspect. And do you know where Mr. Rudolph would keep the firearms in the residence? Um, He would keep his handgun in his underwear drawer, and then he would keep his AR-15 like in his closet. And that's the closet in the bedroom as well? Yeah, his bedroom. Um, after the course of uh, what happened on the night, uh, well, early morning hours of the 7th, really, going into the next day, um, <clears throat> did you do any web searches about laws or anything having to do with that? Yes. Uh, and why were you doing that? I've never been in a situation like this before in my life, so I definitely just wanted to do research and just look things up to make sure, um, you know, if anything I need to turn myself in or I need to protect myself, I wanted to make sure I knew what to do. All right. And um, did you have a particular interest in the law? As in? Um, did you want to study it? anything related to that? Go to law school? Oh, well, back in the day, yeah, I didn't want to go to law school, I'm not going to lie, but it ended up not happening. Okay. And you said your profession is a realtor. Real yeah, I'm a, I do real estate. All right, no further questions at this time. Okay, thanks. Who's going to, all right, Ms. Perlet, cross-examination? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> when you met Travis Rudolph, mm. you knew that he had been in the NFL, is that correct? Correct. You knew he played for the Giants, and then he played for the Dolphins, right? Later on. Right, but he... Not initially did I know that, no. But at some point during your relationship, you knew that he had a very lucrative contract with the NFL, correct? I knew nothing about his contract. Okay. But you knew he played for the NFL, right? Correct. Okay. And at some point he became injured, right? Correct. And he was cut from playing for the NFL. He lost his contract, basically, right? Correct. Okay. And he would spend his days down in Miami rehabbing and training, right? No. He would spend his days at home playing video games. So your testimony is that he never went down to Miami and was rehabbing his injury in order to play for the Canadian League that he had just landed a contract with? That's not my testimony. You said what was... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Isn't it true that he was rehabbing his injury? Sometimes. Okay. And other times he was playing video games. That's your testimony. Correct. And isn't it true that he was also training down at the NFL? facility down in Miami after he was injured. I'm not sure what he would do in Miami. That was a concern of yours, wasn't it? That he was off in Miami and you were you didn't know what he was doing, right? Correct. Okay. When Travis, uh, when you met Travis, he had a nice vehicle, a BMW truck, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And he was taking care of you basically financially when you guys were together, was he not? He was not taking care of me financially at all during our entire relationship. Okay. How old were you when you guys met? 23. So in March of 2020, you were 23 years old? March of 2020, yes, I was 23. And you were living with your mom and stepdad and your brother at the time? Correct. That was in the apartment in Delray Beach? Yes. Spring Harbor Apartments? Mm -hmm. Apartment, is that a yes? Yes. Apartment E? Correct. Is that a two-bedroom apartment? No. How many bedrooms? Three. During that time, you didn't own your own home, right? No, I didn't. You were living um, in the home that your parents provided you with, right? Correct. You were living under their roof, right? Correct. You didn't own any property, any real estate, right? No, but I was a realtor. Okay, let's talk about that. You got your real estate license in February of 2020, right? Correct. So right around the time that you and Travis met. Correct. And then COVID hit, right? Correct. And let's see, you made one sale. It was a rental, right? 
Yes. So, during the whole time that you had your real estate license. Um, I just got my real estate license in March, not to cut you off, sorry. But I just got my license in March and then COVID. My question. Okay. Isn't it true that you were not making a living as a realtor? COVID hit. There was no sales going on. You weren't making a living as a realtor, right? Correct. Okay. So you're living with your mom and dad. Sure. Feel free to stand up and stretch, please, ladies and gentlemen, but remember and obey the four cardinal rules. All right, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. So you really weren't making a living as a real estate agent, right? Um, no, but I do have a mom, and she's a medical assistant, so. Okay, and you were living with your mom, Correct. right? And yeah. you and you also had some uh, costly cosmetic surgery around that time, right? I felt uncomfortable discussing that, so. Yes. <clears throat> During the time you had cosmetic surgery, did you not? I did have cosmetic surgery. Okay. And it's your testimony that um, even though that you weren't making a living as a realtor, you were you were not relying on F Travis for any financial help, correct? Correct. Okay. In fact, yesterday you testified and you told this jury that you never, uh, fin he never financially supported you 1,000%, right? Correct. You, at that time, you were also sleeping over his house pretty much on a daily basis. That's what you told the jury yesterday? Correct. And it was during this time that you and Travis were dating that you were actually married to another man, Andre Chinsang. Is that correct? Legally separated, but correct. Well, you were still legally married, weren't you? The people are, could be married and separated. Okay. So we were separated. Right. But you weren't divorced, let me put it that way. Correct. Okay. So if you're not divorced, then you're still legally married. Is that correct? I thought separated was a thing when it came to marriage. I thought you can either be married, separated, or divorced. But if you want to get technical, like very technical, yes, we were not divorced. Okay. And while you were dating uh, Travis for this year or so, year and a half, you never told him that you were married to another man, right? No, I didn't. And you testified yesterday that um, you and Travis had a conversation um, about marriage. Is that right? That's what you told this jury yesterday, that you and Travis, at some point, you had a conversation about marriage. You remember that? I didn't necessarily say we had a conversation about marriage. They, we basically were discussing what that has that came up about a future. And I said things have came up that weren't that serious. But yeah, conversations were had about marriage. That was your test. Not not specifically about marriage. Just about a future between me and him, ba kids, things, etc., stuff like that. Okay, so your 
you're telling this jury today that you did not say yesterday on direct examination that you and Travis had a conversation about marriage. Is that what you're telling this jury? No. We had a conversation about that. Yes, we did. Okay. And you, you had a conversation with a man about marriage, and you're still married to Andre Chisang. Is that correct? Correct. So you lied to Travis. You misled him, did you not? Travis never asked me if I was married. So you have to be asked a question in order to get an answer or to be told the truth? Is that what you're telling this jury? I'm just telling the jury that the conversation about me being married never came up, so I never spoke on it because I felt like it was not my personal business to speak on. Right, so what you're telling this jury is that unless somebody asks you a question, a specific question, you don't have to tell them the correct or honest answer. That's what you just told them. I'm not telling you guys that. I'm telling you guys that in relationships, you have a past. It might not be clean. It might not be the best past that you have. But I decided to leave the past of my relationship behind me. When I started dating Travis, I felt like I didn't need to disclose that because it had nothing to do with what me and Travis had going on. So you were talking about marriage and you're married. You never told him, right? Isn't it true you never told him? I never. No, he answered. <laughs> Next question, please. You said that it, yesterday you told the jury that your relationship with Travis wasn't an open relationship. You remember that? Correct. Okay. So the, the implication or the understanding was that this was a relationship that was exclusive between the two of you? Correct. Okay. And Andre didn't fit in this at all? Haven't spoken to him in two years. You got divorced from him um, after Mr. Rudolph's arrest. Is that not correct? Yes, because it was already in the plan before Travis got arrested. Okay. You knew in April of 2021 that Travis had uh, received a contract with the Canadian League and was leaving for Canada in the following month, in May. Did you not? Yeah, I knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he got a contract to play football. He was excited about that. He was leaving for Canada in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he wasn't taking you along with him, was he? I didn't ask to go. I had my own. I was a realtor. Okay. I was starting to get back into real estate. Okay, during COVID when you weren't making any sales, right? <laughs> he wasn't taking you with him, was he? No. He was leaving you, right? He was leaving you. He was going off to Canada, and he was leaving you here in the States, right? Yes. Okay. He had no interest in taking you with him, right? I don't know exactly. Over, overruled. I don't, Go ahead, answer the question. No. I don't know what Travis's intentions were Did of taking me. He used to say things like that all the time, but that's hearsay. So I'm not going to say that. Hold on. You're telling us, let me ask it this way. This man never planned on taking you with him to Canada. Isn't that true? I don't know that for a fact. Did he ever tell you he was taking you to Canada with him? He would say things like that all the time. You can come visit me, things like that all the time. He wasn't taking you, you with him. He had no intentions because his... I don't, I don't know that. So you ask, you're asking me a question and I'm responding to you. I do not know if he had intentions or not of taking me. You didn't have a plane ticket to go with him, did you? He didn't have one either. He didn't even have a passport. <laughs> did you have a plane ticket to go with Mr. Rudolph to Canada? He was not leaving until May, and no, I did not have a plane ticket. This all happened in April. I'm, at the time of this incident, did you have any means of transport or a plane ticket, anything showing this jury that it was his intention that you were moving to Canada with him? No. And you knew at, in April when you guys were dating that it was his plan to just go work in Canada for a short period of time, and his hope was to get back into the NFL. Isn't that true? I didn't know his ins and outs. I knew he had a contract with the CFL, and that's the most that I can say to you. That's all I really know. Okay, so he never discussed with you his hope that he was going to come back to Florida and work again for the NFL? That was never a discussion? He has said things like that, but I don't know exactly his intentions of what would have happened. Well, he did say things like that. There was a discussion with you about that. You just there, that. there was a discussion. Overruled. Didn't you just say that you guys had a discussion mm. about that? Yeah, we had a discussion. Was that so hard? 
It's not. I'm just trying to make sure I'm answering the questions to my best ability. That's okay. it. All you have to do is tell the truth, and it'll be. I am telling the truth, but you're asking. Question. Thank you. Okay. You were hoping that when he got the contract with the NFL, that you guys would then be married, like you told the jury you guys had discussed. And no. You, and you would benefit by his millions of dollars that, that he was going to be making from the NFL. First of all, I didn't even know how much Next money he was thing. being offered. Next question. <clears throat> you guys had broken up in April, of six, eight, April 6th of that year, right? You were basically finished. Um, I wouldn't say that from the text messages that were shown yesterday. Well, what about in your mind? Not about the text messages. Isn't it a fact that you guys were pretty much over? I said I wanted a break, but you know how relationships are. Relationships are iffy. You might say you want a break one day. The next day, you guys might be far. Relationships are iffy. You might say you want a break one day. The next day, you guys might be, might be back together. So. Well, you told the jury yesterday that you hadn't seen each other for about a month. You remember that? If you don't see someone, it doesn't mean that you're not with them. Okay. Well, you weren't with each other during that month. You weren't having any but we were so relations in during that month. Right? But we were talking every day, FaceTiming every day. And some days when he would come back down, he would come pick me up and I would see him. Correct. But you would agree that if you don't see somebody for a month, and prior to that, the implication is that you were seeing them before that, that the relationship has taken a change in course, has it not? Because I had surgery. So the only reason you stopped seeing each other for a month was because you had surgery. Correct. I was at his house every day before I had surgery. And then when I had surgery, I was only able to move so much. And I wasn't really able to drive in a vehicle that much. You just said that sometimes he would come and pick you up, even though you told I had to sit a certain way. I had to do things a certain way in order to go places. Yes. Even though you told the jury yesterday that he took care of you for a week, right? Mm -hmm. While you were recuperating, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Yesterday, you told the jury that you were concerned because he was in Miami so long and I didn't know where we stood. Remember telling the jury that? Yes. Okay. So you didn't know where your relationship was at. Isn't that correct? I didn't know when it came to him being in Miami, but I knew that me and him still had a solid relationship because it was over a year. Well, why did you say then? I was concerned that he was in Miami so long. I didn't know where we stood. I didn't. That's why I was going on the movie date so I can figure out where we stood. Because your relationship was, was basically over at that point. You didn't nobody nobody ever said the relationship was over. So, so to my knowledge, it was not over. You now said, or what you told you yesterday, was that he was in Miami so long to use your, your terms. So he was spending a lot of time in Miami, was he not? He was spending time in Miami, yes. He was spending time, more time in Miami than he was playing video games, wasn't he? Mm, kind of in the middle. Okay. And you were jealous that he was down in Miami so long, right? I'm not going to use the term jealous. No, I was not jealous. I want him. I wanted him to do well. I wanted him to go to the CFL. I knew that was his dream, so I, I wouldn't call that jealous at all. You knew then, now again, that after he went to Canada, his dream was to come back and his hope was to get a contract with the NFL, right? I mean, usually that's what people decide. I'm not sure exactly what his decision was, but if you go off to the CFL, yes, that is something that you do try to pursue after. Okay. You also told the jury yesterday that I felt uncertainty because I didn't see him for a month. You remember that? Correct. Okay. So you basically did not see him at all for a month, right? In person, because I was healing, but I did see him through FaceTime, on the phone, through text, every other type of communication. Why would you feel uncertainty if the relationship was had changed course? Why did you care that he was down in Miami? It's not that I cared. It's just that I just had surgery, so I kind of wanted comforting from him and him to be there a little bit more and things like that. So that's more of what it was. Well... You had some concerns because the minute he stepped out of the house when DJ came home, you took it upon himself to snoop through his phone, You right? I didn't snoop because he gave me the password, so I just want to clarify that. Oh, well, hold on. He did not give you the password that day, right? He gave it to me to t let me know I can look through it whenever I wanted to. Right, that he gave you that password months earlier, earlier on in the relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. 
So it, this is not a situation where you guys are alone in his house. He says, hey, by the way, here's my password. Feel free to go into my phone. I'm going to go step outside. That didn't happen, right? No. Okay. So he walks out for a minute, and you could not resist to take his phone, his personal property, go in, put his password, and start snooping around, right? Yes, because we were in a relationship, and he gave me that password. So have you snooped around in his phone on prior occasions with his password? No, because I, I just had surgery, so I haven't seen him in, like, I haven't seen him in a while. Right. So you were snooping around because you were... I wouldn't use the word snoop. Overruled. You were snooping around because you were concerned about him seeing other women down in Miami. Isn't that the bottom line? The bottom line is he's, he was my boyfriend at the time. I haven't seen him in a month, and I was curious. That's the bottom line. You didn't want to lose him, right? Of course not. And when Travis said that he found Ky um, Kyla's body more attractive than yours, you became infuriated, right? No. You didn't? No. You, didn't, you weren't upset that he found Kyla more attractive than you? No. When you saw the text from Kyla, you told the jury yesterday, it was time for me to go. You remember that? Correct. And when you saw the text from Kyla, Travis was still outside, right? He was out with his brother. You were, you were looking through his phone when he was outside. Correct. So you waited for Travis to come back into the house to confront him, did you not? I more so didn't confront him. I just went into the room to grab my things. So you didn't walk right out the door, did you? I went to go grab my things, and he seen his phone on the couch, so he kind of put two and two together. You waited for him to come back in so that you could confront him. Isn't that what's happening? I didn't confront him. He kind of confronted me about the situation because he's seen his phone was open. You wanted to hurt him, and that's why you stayed in the house, so that you could confront him and then destroy his property. Did you not? No, I wanted to grab my things, and I wanted to leave. Okay. Well, you immediately went off on him, didn't you? No. Yesterday you told the jury I was... I was hurt. I was not angry. You remember that? Yes. But you were actually very angry, were you not? I was more so hurt than angry. But you were also angry, weren't you? I was more so hurt than angry. Do you remember giving a testimony under oath on November 8th of 2021? No. You don't remember coming to the courthouse? I remember, but you have to kind of refresh my memory. You remember coming to the courthouse, right? You were subpoenaed? For the self... No, you were, you were subpoenaed to come to the courthouse, and you gave sworn testimony. Do you remember that? Was it the deposition? I'm, I'm just... Sure. <clears throat> what Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen.
All right, you may continue. Do you remember giving a sworn statement on November 8th of 2021? Yes. And do you remember being asked similar questions about uh, whether you were angry after you noticed that he was talking with Kayla? Um, I believe those questions were asked. Okay. And do you remember the question? Um, Sustained. Wasn't the question asked of you, and that made you very angry? Objection. Sustained. You've got to show her the, the document. Sure. <clears throat> Yesterday, you told the jury that you told Travis a million times, I want to leave, and he wouldn't let me go. You remember that? Yes. And isn't it, in fact, that he was the one that was actually trying to calm you down? Not at the beginning, no. At some point, he was trying to calm you down, wasn't he? No. Isn't it true that he was trying to talk some sense into you? No, I was trying to get my things and leave, and he was trying to stop me from leaving. You also used the word that Travis was acting erratic yesterday. You remember that? Correct. Isn't it the fact that you were the one that was actually being erratic? I would say he started it, and then, yes, I became erratic right after. So after you saw the text messages from Kayla, you actually had Travis FaceTime her, did you not? Yes. Okay. Did you FaceTime her, or did you have Travis FaceTime her? I just put the phone up and pressed FaceTime, okay, so, so she didn't see me or anything. And the reason you did that was so that she could only see Travis and you could evaluate or watch the way that uh, Travis was interacting with her, did you not? Correct. Okay. And so what did you, after you saw that interaction, you, it was your impression that somehow these two had a relationship, right? I wouldn't say relationship, but something was going on, yes. It was more than a friendship, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And that infuriated you as well, right? No. I'm not going to use the word infuriated. You were angry? More hurt. Okay. So you smashed his iPhone not out of anger but because you were hurt? Yes. Okay. You also picked up the metal trophy on his dresser um, and you hit him over the head, did you not? I did not hit him over the head. So what did you do with the metal trophy? If I hit him over the head with a metal trophy, would I you? What you did instead, not if. I held the metal trophy up because he was standing in front of the door. I was asking him if I could leave. He said no. So I picked it up and I said, let me leave. And he ended up raising his hands up and he said, okay, you can go. All right. So you never hit him with the trophy. You never threw the trophy at him. None never. Of him, right? Not at all. Um, you also took his PlayStation and broke it, did you not? That was far. For, are we going in chronological order or no? I'm going in. I'm asking questions. You're answering them. Okay. The question was, regardless of the chronological order, at some point you took his PlayStation and you smashed it, did you not? Yes, after I was slammed on the ground, I did. Okay. So you did all these things not out of anger, but you did them because you were hurt, right? It got to a point where I was angry, but with the questions that you were asking me, was I infuriated about him saying things about Kayla or the other things you were asking me? That was out of hurt, but did it, it did get to an angry point. Yes, it did. And that's when he was following you outside and he was in your ear telling you that Kayla had a better body than you, right? It was more than that. It was the bitch word, the fuck you, the, it was more than just about a female. Okay, and isn't it true? Let's talk about the B word. You were calling him a broke bitch. You were screaming at him out there on the front lawn, were you not? After he started calling me one first, yeah, I, I was. So you called him a broke bitch. What did you mean by that? That he has no money? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So why was that important 
Why the fact that he had no money? Why was that? Why was that something that was important to you at that point? It wasn't important to me because I was still dealing with him when he didn't have money. Okay, but why? Why is that? Why was that important at that point when you're being? Um, because he's saying low blows to hurt my feelings. So as a reaction, as a human, I'm going to say low blows to hurt his feelings. So you were pretty fired up at this point, right? I wasn't really that fired up, but I was upset and I was re reacting to what he was saying to me at that point. Yes. You testified yesterday before this jury that he compared me to other women. You remember that? Yes. Okay. So besides Kayla, who else did he compare you to? He, it was just, I can't pinpoint names or anything like that. I don't really remember. It was just a lot of different names of who I am, what I am, okay. and things like that. And that, that set you off, right? Didn't set me off. I, just, I wanted to go. It was ready. It was time for me to go. It was just getting too heated. All right. Well, you say now you wanted to go, but didn't you tell the jury yesterday, then Travis said, get the F out of my house. Do you remember telling the jury that yesterday? I told the jury that I had to go get my things. You told the jury, then he said, get the F out of my house. That's what you told the jury. Okay, he might have said that. That's Yeah, he said that. He wanted you out. He wasn't blocking you. He wanted you out of the house. He wanted me to get out after he told me to go in the house to get my things. So I went into the house to grab my personal items that I brought over there. Right. He didn't want you there anymore. He wanted you out of his house. That's what you told the jury yesterday. Okay. He wasn't keeping you confined in there, was he? He was. He wasn't falsely imprisoning you yet uh, uh, on the 6th, was he? He was keeping me confined in the room. That's why I picked up the trophy. And that's why he told you to get the F out of the house. That's right. You're not in chronological order, so you're saying it. At some point, he told you to get, F, get the F out of his house, did he not? After he held me in the room and was not allowing me to leave. He wanted absolutely nothing to do with you. Isn't that the fact? I want absolutely nothing to do with him. And isn't true, you told this jury yesterday, that Travis said, I don't like you anymore. You remember that? You remember telling this to the jury yesterday? He was saying, I don't necessarily remember him saying those exact words, but he was saying a lot of things. Like like I, I said as... Then why'd you tell the jury yesterday he said, I don't like you anymore? He probably did say that. He was saying a lot of hurtful things. So he did say that, right? Okay, so yeah. So he told you to get the F out of his house, and he didn't like you anymore, right? Okay. Is that true? Over a million other words, but yes. Okay, well, those, I'm asking you about those specific words, not the other million words that he said. Yes. So he said a million words? Not a million, but he said a lot of other things. So you just told the jury he said a million words, so is that true? He said other, a lot of other things. I'm asking you if your He story, said a lot of other things. That's my question. I'm asking you if your testimony right now that he told you a million words, if that's an exaggeration or if that's the truth. Obviously, he didn't say one million words. That's what you just told them. But he, he said a lot of other things to me. Are there other things you've exaggerated about during your testimony? Not at all. I've been extremely truthful. All right. So despite the fact that he told you these things, you want the jury to believe that he was the one that was blocking you during this event. Asked and answered, sustained. Next question, please. I was, um, you, you didn't want to leave because what you were doing was interested in destroying his property, right? No. Yesterday you told the jury, I was saying stuff, but Travis started, right? Right. And isn't it a fact that you are the one that actually started this whole thing by sneaking and looking into his phone? I didn't sneak and look through the phone if I have the password. But he didn't tell you you could look at his phone, did he? But if someone gives you something and tells you you are allowed to look at it, I don't believe that it's called sneaking. Okay. Isn't it true that you were the first person to become physically violent when Travis with Travis and not the other way around no not at all when we were in the house he was already nudging me to get out you were the one that was first physically uh, physically violent were you not um if you can play something or show me something if you, I can't recall the exact steps of the moments.
Amen. I'm sorry, what were you talking about? Uh, this is November 1st. Yes. Do you remember me asking you those questions? I'm reading. Give me one moment, please. No, I'm asking you. Do you remember? I'm trying to read them so I can... Saying that that that's not. True. I didn't say that. I said I didn't remember. I said if you can show me something to recall in my memory, I just okay. said that. I, you do remember that that he, you were right. the one that started being physically violent with him. Yes, after he started calling me names in my face, running me down. Yes, I tried to push him away from me. You may. Um, yesterday, you testified to this jury on direct examination that Travis manhandled you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, you've also testified that he uh, threw you, picked you up off your feet, and slammed you to the ground two times. Is that correct? Right. Is that correct? Right. So he literally picked you up off your feet and then slammed you to the ground on two occasions. Correct. And you testified that he was disrespectful yesterday that's the moral of the story is that correct correct isn't the moral of the story is that you sent your brother and his friends to go kill travis no the moral of the story is him putting his hands on me that is really the basis of everything and, and i didn't send my brothers to kill him no, you just sent a text to go shoot up his shit right I, I didn't say shoot him you sent a text to go shoot up his shit right correct Let's tell the jury what the shit is when you're angry, you say things. I'm sure everyone in this courtroom has said something when you're, I'm trying to speak. If you want me to answer your question, you have to let me answer your question. Well, if you were responsive to my question, I wouldn't have to. All right, answer the question, please. Okay, can you repeat your question? The question was shit. What does shit mean in the context of that text? Anything but him. Okay, so it could have been his brother? No. It could have been the house? Nothing violent it, toward a person. It could have been his mother's house, right? I was upset and I my adrenaline was running and I said something that I didn't mean. That's the bottom line of that. I didn't mean for him to do, for my brothers to do any of that. That's why when my brother left the house, he did not have a firearm on him. So you're not answering my question again. Okay. okay you told the jury that shit meant anything other than a person, right? That's what you just told them. You remember that? Okay, can I clarify the jury? Finish my question. Okay. Didn't you just tell the jury that shit meant anything other than a person? Yes or no? I would like to clarify that. Well, answer yes or no, and then you can clarify. Did you not just tell them that? I did tell them that, but I want to clarify what I mean. Okay. When I said that, I was upset. I was angry, and I said something that I didn't mean. My adrenaline was running. I'm, am I... I am clarifying my answer. Am I not? Go ahead. Finish. 
So I was upset and, uh, and I ended up saying something that I didn't mean. Like people say things when they're upset that they don't mean all the time. But since the situation has happened, it obviously blew up 20 times more. But I didn't necessarily mean for anything to happen to Travis, his family, his house or anything. It's like my, it was like my second home. I would not want anything to happen there. All right. So again, when you just told the jury that when you sent the text, to go shoot up his shit, to to shoot meant anything other than a person. I just clarified my answer to the jury. I'm asking, isn't that what you just told them? Sustain, sustain. <laughs> Next question, please. Isn't it true that when you left his house, that? He didn't slam you to the ground. Well, he didn't lift you up off your feet and slam you to the ground. That you actually tripped and fell. I didn't trip and fall. Isn't it true that Travis put his foot out and you tripped over his foot and you fell? No, that's not true. So you're telling this jury that the video that we saw from the ring camera shows him picking you up off your feet and <laughs> slamming you to the ground. You can barely see it because Daryl's in the way. So it's the video does the video that the video that we seen yesterday, you can barely see the physical, the full physical between me and Travis. Right, but the, the video is the video, right? Correct. But you're night not, late. You're not suggesting to the jury that that video is tampered with, right? No, okay. not at all. But I'm just saying the angle of it wasn't you couldn't see the full testimony of what I'm saying. Well, we saw you. Mm hmm. Got a yes? Correct. We saw Travis, right? Yes. We saw you fall to the ground, right? And you saw Daryl in front of the whole entire thing. And we saw you on the ground, right? Correct. We saw you jump right back up, right? Correct. And then we saw you storm into the house, right? Yes, he was saying to get my things. Okay. You told Keyshawn that uh, Travis slammed you to the ground two times, right? Correct. You also told the police that Travis slammed you to the ground several times, right? Correct. You also told Tyler that Travis slammed you to the ground a couple times. Correct. And you also told that to Tierney and Linda, right? Correct. And to be clear, Tierney is Tierney Coleman, Travis's sister? Correct. And Linda is his mom, right? Correct. So you told basically everyone that night that he picked you up off your feet and slammed you to the ground? Correct. Now, on the, on the video we saw, uh, you ran or you went back in the house uh, for the purpose of getting your tequila bottle, right? I was grabbing all my things. I, I think I still had things on the couch as well. One of the things you went back into the house to grab was your tequila bottle, was it not? Correct. The bottle that you had bought early that evening. Correct. That was your bottle, not Travis's, right? Correct. And... Isn't it a fact that you started um, hitting him, um, and we saw that on the video yesterday, that you started hitting him with your fists? Yes. Okay. And you were slapping him, were you not? I wasn't. I don't think I slapped him, but I did, like, throw a punch or two, yeah, at him so I can go in there and get my stuff. He wasn't letting me. Okay. So he was physically holding you and not letting you go in? He was blocking me from going in. He's telling me to get my things. I'm going in there to get my things. Then he's blocking me, saying, like, back up. And he never raised a hand and touched you, did he not? Yeah, he was raising his hand the whole time, like grabbing me, pushing me back. Yeah, the whole time. Okay, so he was, did he punch you? No, he didn't punch me. Did he slap you? No, he didn't slap me. Did he pick up any objects and hit you over the head with them? No. So other than standing there, right, and he, he did absolutely nothing else to you? Just phys like a physical... Physical altercation without punching or slapping or anything like that. Just the grabbing of grabbing me up and DJ trying to grab him. It was. Where was he grabbing you? Was he grabbing you by the hair? Just like by my shoulders, but like by my arms, like trying to get out, things like that. Even though he's the one that told you to get the F out of his house, right? No, he told me to go in there and get my stuff. Because okay. he wanted you out. He wanted you out of there. And I was leaving with my things that I brought. Including your bottle. It doesn't matter about the bottle, but I wanted my actual clothes and things that I brought because I used to sleep over there all the time. Well, it doesn't matter about your bottle because when you did leave the house eventually, you took that bottle Judge, and you hit him over the head. Sustained. 
Isn't it true that after you left the house, you picked up a brick outside on the lawn? Um, I picked up a lot of things and I threw a lot of things. I'm not 100% sure about everything, but I threw, I was throwing things, yes. Okay. And you picked up that brick. It was your intent to smash Travis's car window, was it not? It wasn't my intention. I was just frustrated and angry and I was throwing things. Including the brick, right? Correct. Okay. Why do you want to smash his car window? I, like I said, it wasn't intentional. I was just throwing things because I was upset. And you, when you were throwing things, you were also screaming things at him, like you were going to send your brother Keyshawn over to kill him, right? Never, ever, ever said the word kill at all. Okay, so when you were yelling at him, telling him that you're sending your brother Keyshawn over, it was just to shoot up his shit? Um, I texted that message. Yes, I did. When you were screaming and yelling at him while you still were at his house, telling him that you're sending Keyshawn over, what exactly did I you never threatened. I never threatened him the messages between me and my brother were only between me and my brother they have never seen those messages and so everything has came out to this day you you're aware that travis's car window smashed right correct did you do it yes when did you do it um right before i left while travis was still outside um i don't know if he was outside or inside but he was still outside yelling okay so we saw some video yesterday after you left mm -hmm. travis is still outside you remember that yeah. So your testimony is that while he's outside, you smashed his his uh, car window, right? No, I, I wasn't there at that point. I think I was already on my way home at that point because I didn't see those videos. When he came outside with no shirt on and all that, that was my first time seeing that. So when did you exactly smash it? After you were on the lawn, picked up the brick, DJ and Travis came, they took the brick away from you. You remember that? Correct. And then you got in your car and you left. Did you not? Yeah. All right, so you didn't break the car window at that point, right? I was throwing things, so it could have hit it at that point. So it's possible that you hit, hit it at, while Travis was still outside, or had he gone back in the house? I'm not sure. Okay. You also, uh, when you left the house, you called your brother Keyshawn. You remember that? Yes. Okay, and you were still crying and upset when you called him, right? Yes. And then you also called Tyler Robinson, uh, when you left uh, Travis's house, did you not? Yes. And you were crying and upset at that point as well? Yes. And you told both of them that Travis had picked you up and slammed you to the ground, right? Yes. And that he had disrespected you? Yes. And you also sent a text message to Keyshawn uh, at roughly 945 that Travis dropped you to the ground. Do you remember that? Yep. And in response to that text message, Keyshawn sent a group text message to you and Tyler Robinson that Travis is a dead man walking. Is that correct? Yes. And that's the message that you deleted from your phone, right? No, I deleted the shoot his shit up message. And you also deleted the dead man walking message. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember if I did or not. Why did you delete messages so that this jury couldn't see them? It It is argumentative, phrased that way. Rephrase, please. Sustained. Why would you delete evidence so that it's not available for the jury to see? The evidence wasn't deleted for the jury not to see because clearly I'm standing up here right now and I'm admitting that I did delete the messages and I'm confessing that I did turn my phone into the police enforcement. It wasn't for the jury not to see. After all these actions have happened, you have to understand how that looks. It looks ridiculous. Beforehand, if nothing like that happened, it would have just been words that were said. People say things when they're mad, their adrenaline is running all the time. So that is the reason why I deleted them after I came to the conclusion that there was a shooting. And you were concerned about that. You had a guilty conscience, did you not? I still have a guilty conscience to this day. And I, and I will say that to the jury, to everybody in here. Of course I do. And that was never my intentions for no one to die or for even for him to be sitting over there right now. Just to go shoot it up, whatever, whatever the shit was, right? Like I said, I made a, a, a terrible choice of words during that time. I was 23. I was young. I was dumb. I made a very, very bad decision when I said those words, but it was never my intentions. You deleted those text messages because you know that they were incriminating, right? No. I deleted those text messages because it actually happened, and I'm I was what confused happened? and. What actually happened? 
Travis shot at them. So I immediately thought in my head, they're going to think this is, I, I planned something. Like, that's immediately what I thought in my head. You were worried about you getting arrested and you getting in trouble and setting this whole thing into motion. No, no. I was worried about saying the wrong thing and it actually, something coming out of it. That's what I was worried about. And you deleted it. Correct. And when I was asked for it, I gave it to them. When you, after you deleted those text messages before you gave your phone to Detective Vanderland. And Detective Vanderland asked me, did you delete anything out of your phone? I'm not asking you what she said. My question was that you deleted those text messages before you gave your phone to law enforcement. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And those text messages were never found on your phone because you deleted them. Is that not correct? I don't know that. And the only reason that we have those text messages is because they were found on your brother's phone, on Keyshawn's phone. If you know, do you know? No, I don't know. So to this day as you sit here, you have no clue how those text messages were discovered by law enforcement. Because we no. know they weren't on your phone. Right? No, I don't know how. You knew at the time of that this incident that your brother owned a gun, right? Correct. And that was a 9 millimeter Glock? Correct. And you also knew that he had owned other guns um, over a course of time, did you not? Um, I knew he had his license to carry. I didn't ask about his license and to carry. My, I'm question, not... my question was, you knew that he also had other guns during the course of the time that he owned, that he first bought his first gun. He had owned other uh, guns besides that Glock. That was my question. Not his concealed weapons permit. She's arguing. What's the objection, please? I'm objecting because it is misleading, the question is misleading. All right, rephrase, it is. You knew that your brother owned, at the time of the incident, one gun. Is that correct, a Glock? Correct. That's your testimony? Correct. But he also owned other guns, right? I'm not sure during his time of how many guns I don't. Well, are you aware that he had a nine millimeter Taurus that he sold to Tyler Robinson? Yes. Okay. What other guns are you aware of that your brother had and sold? Um, the gun that you just mentioned. I know he sold that to Tyler. Any other guns that you're aware of that he had and sold? No. You're not aware that he had a 380 that he purchased and sold? No. You knew that Tyler Robinson also, at the time of the incident, owned a gun, the Taurus 9mm, did you not? No. The gun that your brother sold, you, didn't, you weren't aware that he still, that Tyler still... I'm not, I'm not aware of the exact transaction, when the transaction happened, how many days, I'm not aware of that. But yes, I am aware that the gun was sold to Tyler. And you're aware that Tyler Robinson discovered since the incident that Tyler Robinson, in fact, did take a gun with him to Travis Rudolph's house, right? If you know. If you know. Did I know that? So to this day as you're sitting here, you're telling this jury. As After. You, I, hold on. You're telling this jury as you sit here today under oath mm -hmm. that this is the first time you're hearing that Tyler Robinson brought a gun with him to Travis Rudolph's house. Is that what you're telling the jury? No. So when did you learn that Tyler Robinson brought a gun to Travis Rudolph's house? I can't remember the exact time I learned. But you, you know that now, right? Right? Yes, I know that now. So you tell Tyler and your brother to go shoot his shit up, and Tyler Robinson actually brought a gun to his house, right? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. a yes? Yes. Have you ever asked Tyler Robinson why he brought his gun there? Um, he says he carries his gun. The question is, did you ask him? No, I never asked him. You were just going to give an answer. So which is it? You didn't let me. So you choose. Ms. You? Jones, just answer. Sorry. Question, <laughs> question <laughs> was. What was the question? Question was, did you ever ask him? No. Okay. Next question. Is the way you talk to me, is that the way you talk to Travis? How am I talking to you? I feel like I'm being respectful. Okay. So. You just made a comment to me. Judge, objection to commenting on the witness. 
sustain. You didn't call the police that night to report that Travis Rudolph uh, threw you, picked you up by your feet, and slammed you to the ground two times, committing a battery on you, right? No. Um, you were battered, though, right? That's your testimony. All right. Um, your testimony is also that you were basically falsely imprisoned and held against your will. Did you call the police to tell them that? No. Okay. Instead, you drove home, right? Correct. Adele Ray? Yes. And Keyshawn was there? Correct. Okay. And you were crying and upset? Um, I kind of calmed down by the time I got there. All right. And you and Keyshawn had a conversation about what had happened, right? Yes. And you testified yesterday on direct examination that Keyshawn told me I was overly tripping. It's not serious. You both of us, not just me. Who? Who? Me and Travis, like, we're both overly tripping it wasn't what does overly serious. tripping mean just meaning in relationships sometimes things get out of hand for no reason and an outsider can see better than me and him inside the relationship okay, so you you again you told the jury that Keyshawn told you that right correct um so your brother is telling you basically that this wasn't that serious right and yeah he was going to just go over there and speak with him correct my question was that he told you that this wasn't serious right i said yes so you didn't have any bruises or scratches on your face, right? No, but I did have injury. You didn't have any bruises or scratches to your arm, did you? No. You didn't have any bruises or scratches on your neck, right? No, but I did just have any bruises or scratches on your back, right? No. You would agree, Ms. Jones, that um, you don't need to bring three men with you if you're just going to go talk to somebody? Objection to asking the witness her opinion on other people's actions. Sustained. You testified that you were the one that told Keyshawn to go talk to him, right? Correct. So it wasn't Keyshawn saying, I'm going to go be your protector and take and take care of this. You're the one that encouraged him to go do that, right? No. When I told him what happened, he he's he instantly is like, I'm gonna go holler at I'm gonna go talk to Travis. You just told this jury that it was you who told him to go talk to him. That's what you told this jury yesterday. That's what you just answered and now you're changing your answer. So which I'm not I'm not changing my answer at all. Me and him had a mutual conversation, and the mutual conversation was I told him what happened. He said he was going to go speak with them, and I agreed. Yesterday you told this jury that you're the one that told him to go talk to Travis. Like I said, it was a mutual. I, I told him to go talk to them, and he said he was going to already on his own. After you told him to go do it, right? That's what you told this jury yesterday. Objection to the mischaracterization and the witness. Overall. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. After the shooting took place, um, Chris Lowe and Keyshawn FaceTimed you, isn't that correct? Correct. And that FaceTime call was made before you got to the hospital and gave your statement to Detective Ema. You remember? No, I was already at the hospital when they called me. But that call was made before you gave your statement to Detective Ema. Correct. Okay. So before you gave your first sworn statement to law enforcement, you had already spoken with Chad Lowe and your brother about what happened, right? Incorrect. The conversation was more of him crying, saying he thinks Sebastian died. It wasn't, it was more of an emotional conversation. It wasn't a sit down and let's discuss exactly what happened. Told you that Sebastian had died, right? Correct. And they told you that uh, Tyler told you he had a gun, right? Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. Didn't you also become aware that Tyler Robinson had a gun that night with him at that point? Not at that moment, no. So they only told you that Sebastian died, and you didn't ask, "Oh my God, how? What happened? Tell me what, how uh, this could have occurred." It was an emotional moment. They're at a, they're 
speaking with law enforcement, I'm at the hospital with Tyler's mom. There's not really much conversation on the table to discuss what happened. So you know one person's dead. You know another person's wounded. Correct. So you're not curious or asking questions about how this happened. No, I am. I called Daryl. Who? DJ, Travis's brother. I called him. Okay, no, I'm not talking about DJ. Right. But you're asking me if I was curious, so I said yes, I was. I called the but person who I called. Curious when you were speaking with Chris Lowe and Keyshawn is my question. No, because they were emotional. They're crying. They're they're not. They're they're distraught. They're not in the right state of mind. Okay. So I wasn't asking them personal questions like that. But you've already testified that you've already, you Facetimed with um, with your brother and Keyshawn right after the shooting, right? Well, Keyshawn's my brother, so Keyshawn and Chris. Keyshawn and Chris, yes. You, are, you testified that you already FaceTimed and you already spoke about it right after the shooting, right? We didn't really speak that much about the exact shooting is what I'm trying to say. It was more of a Sebastian, he thinks Sebastian's dead, he was crying, things like that. And around 2.45 in the morning, you actually gave us a sworn statement to a detective that was at the hospital, is that correct? Correct. And that was Detective Ema, is that right? Yes. And. You didn't tell Detective Ema um, at 2.45 that morning while you were giving your sworn statement under oath, subject to perjury, that you told Keyshawn to go shoot up his shit, right? Um, I, don't I don't remember the exact, that was the very, very first statement I ever gave him. I don't remember exactly what I said. You, you never told him about the text message to go shoot up his shit, did you? I don't recall. Did you ever tell Detective Ema that uh, Keyshawn texted you and Tyler back that Travis was a dead man walking? Do you remember ever telling him that? I don't recall. Isn't it true that you didn't? I don't recall. You may. You want to show the state what you're... Of, of, of what uh, transcript? Thank you. What's the page number? I'm sorry. Okay. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. Look over on page 130. Do you need to look at that as well? No, this is exactly what I just said to you. Um, and it's true that I was asking you questions during that statement in November uh, that are similar to the questions I just asked you now, right? About whether you shared with Detective Ema uh, the text message that 
you instructed. Is it going to object to improper impeachment? Yeah, well, technically it is, but I'm going to allow it. Go ahead. I asked the question, and you didn't tell Detective Ina that you had instructed Tyler and Kushan to go shoot up Travis's ship, right? Answer, no. Okay. Right? Yeah, the answer says no, and I said I didn't rem I don't recall. Okay. So now you recall that? Yeah, now that I'm reading it, you have to remember these. This is a year or two ago, right. so my memory is a little bit more fresher back then. Okay. So if you can show me something, I have no problem owning up to it. So yes, here I did say no. All right. So you never told Detective Ema about the text messages, is that correct? No, me and Detective Ema, um, I believe our conversation was extremely short. Did you tell Detective Ema? that Tyler Robinson had a gun? I don't remember if I told him that or not because I don't think I knew he had one or not at that moment. Did you tell Detective Ema that you t uh, told Linda there was going to be trouble? Do you remember making that? I don't remember. You have November 8th statement there? What yes, page? She still does. Okay, page 131. If you would look, lines 20 23. You didn't tell Detective Emma no, that. No, that. Okay. Did that refresh your memory about what happened? What you said to him? Not really, but Keyshawn was... My uh, question is... No, it doesn't. My question was that you didn't tell Detective Ema about Linda, that you had spoken to her, and that um, you told her that there was going to be trouble. Right? At this moment in time when I'm talking to this detective, I'm just learning and finding out about everything that's going on. I might have missed a lot of details that I then came forth and spoke about, but you're asking me nitty gritty details that at the time when I'm speaking to a detective, I'm not going to remember or recall because I'm just not finding out someone died. Okay, so the, the details that you left out to Detective Ema were nitty gritty? I'm not saying nitty gritty, but there are details... But I'm going, I'm speaking on a death at the point when I'm talking to the detective. Someone's dead. I'm not really worried about what text I sent or what text someone else sent. When it, it came time for us to speak on that, I spoke on that. And I was 100% honest about everything that I had said. But during the time where I'm just finding out somebody who's very close to me has passed away, that's the least thing on my mind at the moment. I'm trying to figure out what's going on you very specific questions, right? Not necessarily. Okay. How, you just rambling and just going freestyle? I was kind of rambling and just saying from what I, I know like has happened from the night. Okay, well his statement started at 2.44 a.m. and ended at 3 o'clock. So it was roughly... 15 minutes. 20 minutes or so. That's what I'm saying. It's not really... I'm, I'm, I'm fine. And... Like, During the course of that statement, he asked you a number of questions, right? All right. Uh, feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen, but please remember and obey at least three of the four cardinal rules. One of them is inapplicable at this point. <laughs>
right. You may continue, Ms. Perlet. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so apparently there's a request for a restroom break, and that's fine. We've been at this for a while today uh, so far. Um, so now, remember to obey the four cardinal rules. Again, cardinal rule number four isn't going to be applicable because you all will be in the, uh, in the uh, jury room. But remember, no discussion about the case, no research, and keep an open mind. Um, we'll take, uh, I know there are only two restrooms in there, and I don't know how many folks have to use them. So uh, uh, let's be back at five minutes after 11. I think that's probably long enough. Five minutes after 11, folks. All right? <laughs> All right, I gotta go look at some warrants. So.
Thank everyone. Everyone take your seat. I wanted to say something. Uh, folks, you see probably that I have a laptop up here. Uh, I am uh, paying attention to everything that's going on. Believe you uh, me, I'm not checking the weather or sports news or anything like that. Every week of every year, um, one judge in Palm Beach County, um, which comprises the uh, Judicial Circuit 15 of 20 circuits within the state of Florida, is on what's known as duty uh, or duty judge. 24-7, um, we have to monitor applications for a variety of different types of warrants. Um, so that's my responsibility this week, including, to, uh, including presiding over this trial. So I don't want anyone to think that I am not paying close attention because I have a laptop up here. I'm just keeping track <laughs> of, the, uh, of the warrants that, uh, that are coming in. And then when we take a break, I go back there and I go through the ones that I'm able to go through in the amount of time that I have. Um, again, just because I have this laptop up here does not mean that I am not paying attention because I am. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, you may continue, Ms. Perlett. Thank you, so we were talking about your statement to Detective Ema um, while you were at the hospital after the shooting at roughly 2.45 in the morning. Okay. And you've testified here that you don't remember um, him asking you specific questions. It was more of you were just telling him everything because of your state of mind was pretty, it was pretty harried because you had just found out that Sebastian was killed and Tyler was shot, right? Correct. Is that what you told the jury? Yes. Okay. And you've, uh, you recall the statement being roughly 15 to 20 minutes in length? Yeah. Is that about right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about, rather than what you didn't tell him, let's talk about what you did tell him, okay? Okay. All right. Um, during this 15 or 20 minutes, isn't it true that you told him that uh, Travis picked you up and dropped you on your back? You remember that? Correct. Okay. Um, and isn't it also true that you told him, I'm going to have my brother come down here because you obviously need a talk? Do you remember telling him that? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Do you remember telling Detective Ema, my brothers, plural, never going to come down here on some harmful anything. Do you remember telling him that? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember telling him about your liquor bottle? Yes, I, I told him I threw the liquor bottle. Okay. And do you remember telling Detective Ema that Travis was in your face talking shit? Yes. And you were slapping him? And I don't remember that part, but I might have said that. Okay. But it did get kind of like very physical at that point. Okay. Um, and do you then remember telling Detective Ema that uh, you left and went home and told your brother uh, you got to go see about me to Travis? Do you remember telling Detective Ema that? Mm, kind of a blur, but I did say to go talk to him, yes. That you told your brother to go talk to him, right? Correct. That's what you told Detective Ema. Yeah, that's what she, yeah, if that's what that says, yes, I don't remember vividly exactly every single word I said, but if that's what I said there, then yes, you can show it to me if you want. You may. That's a copy of your sworn statement that you gave to Detective Ema. Okay. okay. And if you would... Turn to page 8, and look at lines 22 to Did you look at lines 22 to 25 on page 8? All right. Okay. Oh, on page 8. I'm sorry. I'm on 7. 22 through... 25. Okay.
Okay, yes, I, I just read it. Okay, you remember telling, um, remember telling Detective Ema that when you left, you told, you went home and told your brother you got to go see about me to Travis? Um, that's exactly what it says here. Okay. But do I remember, your question was, do I remember it correct? Right. No, I don't. I don't remember ex our exact, that was my very, very first is talk it, with anyone. Is it in fact true that you told Detective Ema that? Your, ask, your question was, do I remember? true that you told Detective Ema that? I don't remember speak, saying this. I'm going to be honest. I remember telling him that I told him to go talk to him, which is on the page previous to this. Okay. Well, you're not disagreeing that you gave a sworn statement. To I'm not disagreeing at all. I just don't remember. You asked me if I remembered. I said no. Okay. But you're not suggesting that what's in there is not correct, right? No. Okay. You remember telling Detective, again, this is, we're talking about what you told him. Do you remember telling Detective Ema um, that without being asked as a question, my brother is uh, licensed to carry. Do you remember that? Um, I probably did tell him that. Right. So you, that, you know, that was an important fact to tell him, right? Just for the simple fact that I found out there was a shooting, yes. I believe I needed to leave. Why would that be important if your brother didn't have a gun? Why did you want Detective Ema to know that Keyshawn had a concealed weapons permit? I wanted him to know because there was a shooting. Because your brother took his gun with him. That's why you want where, to show me where my brother took his gun with him. Show it to me. But you're telling me something that I'm, you're asking me a question. I'm letting you know my answer. So if you don't have proof right in front of my face, then you can't sit here and tell me anything. I'm telling you. Okay, enough. Next question. Exactly. Next question. Stop. Your next question, please. Like the, is this how you talk to Travis? Stop. This is how I'm talking to next you. Next question. Didn't you also tell? that when your brother got to Travis's house, he said, I'm not here to start nothing with you. I'm here to talk. You remember telling Detective Ema that? Correct. So your brother did give you some details about what happened. No, before he left the house, he told me he was going over there to speak with him. Right, but you told Detective Ema that your brother said uh, to Travis, Travis, I'm not here to start nothing with you. I'm here to talk. So you did have details about what happened more than Sebastian was dead and that uh, Tyler was shot, like you told the jury or implied. Isn't that true? I said I don't recall all of the details that were said that night. I was more concerned about Sebastian being dead. All right. Didn't you also tell Detective Ema that the Travis ran out of the house and trucked my brother? Sustain. Next question. Isn't it true that you told Detective Ema that Travis ran out of the house and hit your brother? Um, I don't remember. Okay, if you look at page 11, please. Mm -hmm. Lines 3 through 5. Okay, I'm ready. Isn't it true that your brother said that he ran out and trucked him? Yes. He told Detective Ema. So, but, all, isn't that true? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that you also told Detective Ema that he was with his friends? Yes. So, you knew while you were at the hospital that his friends were with him. After I spoke to Daryl, because he said his dreadhead friend is dead. You spoke, you already testified that you spoke with, with Chris and with Keyshawn. I spoke to them after I spoke to Travis and Daryl. So you're saying that that's how you found out about that was from, from Travis, from who? Daryl, DJ, his brother. They were naming, like, 
that they were saying that light skinned nigga, they were saying the nigga with the dread. So that's when I'm starting to understand like more people came rather than my brother because my brother doesn't have dreads. Well, then can you explain to the jury how it was that you just told the jury that your brother told you that I'm not here to start nothing with you. I'm here to talk. Yeah, there. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we didn't have a discussion on the phone and I don't want to, that's what I'm trying to let the jury understand. I'm not saying there wasn't a discussion over the phone. Was it a detailed discussion about what exactly happened that night? No, the conversation was not that long is my point that I'm trying to get across to you. This isn't a detailed, what I'm reading, this is not detailed at all. Well, this is your detail that you gave to Detective Ema. Which is very minimal because that's all I know. That's what I'm saying. When we talked on the phone. I'm going to talk about what you knew. That's okay. what going through, okay? Cool. You told Detective Ema also that it wasn't like uh, that uh, your brother came in there with a gun and tried to start something. You remember that? Correct. Again, you brought up Keyshawn and his gun, right? Look at page 11, please, lines 14 to 16. Yes, I said, you're, initi you're initiating the fight. You're jumping on my brother. He came there to have a conversation with you. He doesn't. It's not like he came there with his gun because I knew he didn't have a gun. That's why I said that. So you talked about Keyshawn and the lack of not having a gun, right? Right. Right? Because now I'm figuring out there's a shooting. Right. And you also told Detective Ema that uh, Tyler and Sebastian, who are your brother's best friends, had gotten shot, right? Correct. And then um, you, remember, you remember Detective Ema asking you how you had so much detail and knew so much? I said I spoke with them. They called me briefly. They were crying. It was a very short conversation. Sure, but you do remember that. And I also spoke with Daryl, and I also spoke with Travis. So do you remember Detective Ema questioning you about why you knew so much details at an event that you weren't at? No. Okay. Page 12, please. If you look at lines... 12 through 16. Yes. Isn't it true that he asked you? And how, how do you know all of this? Your answer, I just spoke with my brother. Do you remember that? And did I not tell you already previously that he told me Sebastian was dead on the phone? This says, read the entire line. And then Sebastian is pronounced dead at this moment. And how do you know all of this? I just spoke with my brother. Before that, there was a lot of discussion about all the details that you and I just discussed before this jury. Minimal details. They're, they're not, they were very minimal details. Do you remember telling Detective Ema that none of your brother's uh, friends and your brother, were, they weren't answering their phones? Do you remember telling him that? Correct. Remember telling Detective Ema going into details about um, a text message that Tyranny Coleman sent you? Mm hmm. Yes. 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 And isn't it true that you actually showed um, a screenshot of one of the text messages that Ms. Coleman sent you to Detective Ema? You had it on your phone and you showed it to him. Remember that? Yes. And that was the only text message that you showed Detective Ema. Isn't that a fact? Um, because I believe the context of the conversation was about that. So, again, the only text message you showed Detective Ema in your sworn statement was one text message from Tierney Coleman. Is that correct? Correct. And the reason you did that was you were trying to portray... No, the oh, reason... Let me finish my question. Is it a question or is it an assumption? All right, just wait for the question, please, Ms. Jones. My question is, that's the only text you showed to the detective, right? 
Yes. You already answered that one. Thank you. Next question. You never, asked a, you never showed him a text from the one that you sent about shoot his shit up or out this is a dead man walking, right? Not until the next day when I was asked or whatever day I was asked. Well, I'm talking about Detective Ema now. Greg, right after, exactly, right after everything has occurred, you have to understand, I'm not in the right state of mind either. I'm just finding out someone passed away. I'm finding out my mom's car shot up. I'm finding out a lot of things at this moment. A lot of details are going to be left out. All right. May I approach the witness room? You may. Make sure the state oh, knows what you're doing. Yes, I'll go back and put it in. All right. Can I have that statement back, please? <coughs> I just handed you what's in evidence as states number 17. That's, remember looking at that yesterday and being asked questions about it? Yeah, but honestly, I'm not really sure exactly what this is. Well, you answered questions. Oh, these are my phone. Oh, these are my phone records. Okay. Okay. All right, you want to just take a look at them? Mm-hmm. You're familiar with that, right? Familiar with what? Well, you just said those are your phone records, right? Your phone log, right? Yeah, I'm starting. I'm realizing that now because I'm seeing numbers that I know. So. Okay, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right, and that call log, if you look at the first page, or second page, rather, look at the very top, you see where there's some dates? Yeah. Okay, and that call log begins on April 8th of 2021, is that correct? Right. Okay, and that's the beginning of that call log, is that right? I believe so. Well, is there anything pre preceding that page? No. Okay, and go to the end of that call log, the last page. Okay. And tell me what, where that call log ends, what's the last date? Af of everything? The very last entry, what was the date? 4-4-2021. Four, four, that? May I approach the- You way? may. Is this not the last page? I think you have that out of order. Four, four. It's actually the last page and then up to four. Yeah, you guys had it out of order. Yeah, I have it. So yes, like I said, the last entry is 4 4 2021. So the last page starts on April 4th, is that correct? Of correct. 2021? Mm -hmm. And it goes through what date? The 8th. Okay. And you've testified that you spoke with Linda Rudolph, is that correct? Um, yes. And isn't it true that Ms. Rudolph's phone number is nowhere in that call log. Let me take a look for a sec. No, I don't see her number. You also testified to the jury that you called um, Linda Rudolph. Is that correct? Judge, that's the same question. That's the same Judge question. Coleman, you just asked excuse me, Miss Coleman. You remember that? Yes, I spoke with both of them. Okay. And can you tell us where Miss Coleman's number is on your call log that you turned into the police? When I was asked, it's not there. It's not there. That's all I asked. It's not on there. Right? Okay. So, did you delete those? No, when I asked to turn my phone in, I turned my phone in. So 
How did these numbers disappear from your call? Why don't you go ask the police officers or the detectives? Your phone. I'm asking you if you deleted those. I didn't, and I answered your question. So you didn't delete them? I didn't delete those phone calls between Tierney, and I didn't delete those phone calls between his mother. You would have to ask law enforcement. Did you turn a different phone over to the Detective Vanderlyn? What different phone do I have? My question to you is, did you turn the phone over that was your phone that you were using on April 6th to Detective Vanderlyn, or did you go out and buy another phone and give her that phone? You have your evidence all my mixed up. I had that phone prior when I was talking to Travis. Okay. So the phone that I turned in, you, you're asking me a question, I'm answering. It was the same phone. It was the exact same phone. So can you tell us how there are the items missing from the call log? That ha I that would have to be taken up with law enforcement. You have no idea. When I turned my phone in, everything that was in my phone and things that weren't there, I spoke on. Okay. Now you testified. May I approach? You may. You testified yesterday. that the very next day you turned your phone over to the detective. You remember that? I don't know if it was the very next day. It was when I was asked. Well, according to your testimony yesterday, you said. Well, the, the objection is improper impeachment or improper question. Um, so rephrase, please. Didn't you tell, didn't you say that you turned your phone over to the detective the next day. When the detective asked me to turn my phone in, that's when I turned it in. I don't know the exact day. Okay. You may. <clears throat> I'm showing you what's been marked now as defense number eight. Um, I had to sign that in order to turn my phone in. Okay, so this is a consent to search form? Correct. And this is your name down here on the lower right? Mm hmm Is that a yes? Yes, and my signature. Is that your signature? And can you tell us what date this is? 4-15. So April 15th of 2021? Correct. The incident occurred on April 6th of 2021? That has no recollection for me. You have to understand that. When they asked me to turn my phone in, that's when I turned my phone in. Okay, so the, you, you actually signed the consent to search on April 15th, 2021. Is that correct? Correct. Is there an objection to the admission of the evidence? Any objection? All right, very well. It's admitted into evidence. Now, you know, in, in the event that there's a review um, by the 4th District Court of Appeal in this case, those, those particular Exhibits have to be down to, uh, yeah, okay, you understand that. that they're not going to be transported in that format. Yes, Judge. All right, thanks. So that was signed by you several days after the incident, right? Right. And then you turned your phone in the following day after you signed that, and you sent your friend uh, Paloma to do that, right? Right. Now, you didn't turn your phone over to the de detective directly. You sent a friend. Correct. And the reason you did that was you didn't want to be interviewed by the detective. Isn't that true? No, I was already previously interviewed by yeah. her. By Detective Ema. We've talked about that. Exactly. But the phone was being turned over to the lead detective in the case, Detective Vanderland. Isn't that correct? Correct. And you never went to see Detective Vanderland. You sent your friend instead, right? Right? My friend turned the phone in. Yeah, you said yes. You asked me this already, and I've answered yes. My friend turned the phone in. Right, and you told the jury yesterday the reason you had your friend do it is because she lived closer. Correct. To the detective than you did, right? Correct. You lived in Delray at the time? Right. Detectives in West Palm Beach, right? Right. It's about a 20-minute car ride. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You have a car, right? You had a car back then. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You couldn't drive 20 minutes to drop your phone off to the detective? It wasn't 20 minutes from my house, though. How many minutes was it? About 40. From Delray to West Palm? 
he was somewhere further. It was far from my house. It was traffic time. So I just get, had to give it, give it to my friend the night before, and she just turned it in after work. Okay. That's all it was. So it's your testimony that the detective told you that you had to come during a specific time that was traffic time? Is that your testimony? She didn't say I had to be come a specific time. I came when I gave my phone when I was ready to give it to her. So you could have gone any time. There wasn't a specific time set during traffic time, right? What's the question? That's my question. Don't you understand? No. Okay. You could have dropped that phone off any time. The detective didn't say you had to come during a specific time. Is that correct? I dropped my phone off when she asked me to drop the phone off. You didn't. Paloma did. Correct. You remember um, there being some discussion yesterday about text messages with um, Daryl, DJ. You remember that? Correct. You remember um, you said on direct examination, I didn't know anybody went with Keyshawn to, his, to uh, Travis's house. You remember that? I said that yesterday. You sure did. Do you remember that? Ty Tyler, I know went. That's it. No, you said yesterday, I didn't know anyone went with Keyshawn. Do you remember telling the jury that? You were trying to um, imply, there was a whole line of questioning about this. Sustain. You testified yesterday that you didn't learn about all this until you were speaking with DJ. You remember that? That's what you told this jury. O overruled. Overruled. Answer the question, please. I'm, I'm confused. Okay, well, let's try to unconfuse you. Start, yeah, let's start over. You because hold on. All right, go ahead. You remember ta you remember telling the jury yesterday when 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 the state was asking you questions about DJ's text, mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. texting back and forth. Okay, that's what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And then you told this jury that the first time you heard about all of this and that there were more people that went there besides Keyshawn was when you were talking and communicating with DJ. But I but prior to this, you have to remember me, Keyshawn, and Tyler were in a group chat. Remember, you said that out of your own mouth. You also just testified that there was a FaceTime. You told Detective Ema details about your brothers going there. Don't you remember you just testified about that? She's chronologically way out of order. All right. She's just like Let's chatting right now. Start over again. <laughs> you are. Like, I don't even understand All right, where you're stop, Ms. Jones. All right, next question. <laughs> start over again so we can get this cleared up and move on. Your Honor, though, can I say something? No, stop. Okay. Go ahead. You knew well before you spoke to DJ and those text messages that your brother and his friends went over to Travis's house, right? No. You t said yesterday that you began to understand who came to the Rudolph residence after and you spoke with DJ or during the time you were speaking with DJ. You remember that? No. Isn't it true that you texted Keyshawn, Sebastian, and Tyler in a group text at 11.44 p.m. on April 6th? Where are you all at? Can I see? I'm just asking you. Do you remember I, that? No, I don't recall that. Okay. Do you remember Tyler sending you a... Well, this is a different question, though. Yeah, I'm asking you. All right, go ahead. Oh, overall, um, overruled, go ahead. Isn't it a fact that Tyler sent a text back to you, Keyshawn, and Sebastian at 11.44 on April 6th? We're on our way right now, RN, right now. Do you remember that? Do you remember that text, responsive no. reply text? Excuse me. All right, next question. Isn't it true that Tyler sent you, Sebastian, and Keyshawn? Do you remember whether is okay. the proper way to ask that question? Do you remember whether Tyler sent you, Sebastian, and Keyshawn a group text at 11.44 a.m.? And that text saying, I love you so much, I got you. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember a text at 11.44 uh, that you sent in a group text to Sebastian, Tyler, and Keyshawn, your response was okay. Do you remember that? No. Okay. 
Okay? Do you remember a text at 1016 that evening before the other text that I just read that Tyler sent to you saying, send me his address? Do you remember that? No. Do you remember at 1017 that you sent Tyler Robinson a text that said, 550 Teak Drive. Do you remember that? No. Okay. Do you remember at 1021 p.m. on the evening of April 6th, sending Tyler a text that you where you said, tell Keyshawn come on. Do you remember that? No. At 1024 p.m. that night, do you remember sending Tyler a text? Okay, you hear? Do you remember that? No. Okay. And after the shooting took place, which was approximately midnight, do you remember at 1258 after the shooting that you sent a group text to Keyshawn, Sebastian, and Tyler? Call. No. Okay. You knew while before you spoke to D before you spoke to Daryl DJ that that group of men were together and that they were at at uh, Travis's house, did you not? I knew Keyshawn and Tyler were together. I didn't know Sebastian was there. And you're not just trying to distance yourself, right? From distance myself from what? Right. Well, you didn't want anyone to know that you were communicating with them because you didn't want to get in trouble. Get you in trouble want... for what? Well, you could have been in trouble for setting this whole thing up and setting this in motion. Weren't you concerned? Setting what up? Your client shot 84 rounds. There was no shots back. What did I set up? Well, you sent somebody to go shoot him, didn't you? Did he get shot? You sent somebody to shoot him, did you not? Did he get shot? All right, Ms. Jones, you had to answer the questions, not ask them. All right, next question. On April 6th, at 10.24 p.m., before the shooting, do you remember Tyler calling you? No. Do you remember seeing that call on your phone extraction, states number 17? If I can't see any evidence in front of me, this happened two years ago. I don't remember. So I'm, you're going to keep receiving the, I'm not trying to. You may. All right. And you've provided Ms. Jones with what? I just provided her with state 17, which is a phone log. Thank you. Okay. So what was the question? You remember. Tyler calling you at 10.24 p.m. on April 6th. Well, do you remember or do you not? I'm looking through the... Okay, but <laughs> the question is, do you remember now without the looking through anything? The question is, I have to look first. All right, so you don't remember. Is no, that right? I have to look to see exactly the time. It shows you more than just somebody calling you all right well if the you're all right, right with that i'm all right with it okay i don't remember okay. i'm gonna get into do you that see? Okay. i don't remember my question is do you see no you don't even know my question so how are you answering no do i see the conversation of tyler calling me no Not a conversation a call on no. your phone log no i don't see it okay do you remember at 10 52 tyler calling you no. Do you know if that's on your call log? Who? That call. Do you see a call on your call log at 1052 from Tyler? No. Okay. Do you remember Tyler calling you, excuse me, that you called Tyler at 1058 p.m. before the shooting? 
I speak to them all the time, so I don't remember. I'm asking you if there's a call on your call log that reflects that. He's no, that isn't what you asked her. You asked her if she remembers. Do you remember? And I said no. Okay, and now take a look at that and tell me if you can see a call that you made to Tyler Robinson at 1058. I don't even know his number anymore. I don't see, so no. I'm going to say no. Well, do you see anything in there that reflects Tyler? You had Tyler's name in his phone as what? In your phone. What, what, what was he in your phone as? Tell the um, jury, please. I don't even see it. I, I think so. No, what, what did you, how did you have him as his, your contact? What was his name in your phone? Didn't you just hear me say I don't see it? No, I'm asking you what you, how you saved his name in your phone. What was his I contact? don't remember. It might have been Ty Ty, but I don't see it here. You're still in touch with him, right? So you don't know how you put him in your phone? Is that, you have to be specific now. You're being, you're using the present tense or the past tense. I can't tell. Ms. Perlette. Okay. At uh, 10.59, a minute later on April 6th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. Okay. Another call at 10.59 on April 6th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. At 12.20, after the shooting, now April 7th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. At 12.23, on April 7th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. 12.38, do you remember calling Tyler? No. 1.29 in the morning, do you remember calling Tyler? No. 1.31 in the, rem in the morning, do you remember calling Tyler? No. Now, with respect to those questions, can you tell me, if you, by looking at that document, if you see any of those calls on there that we just discussed? I don't remember his um, number at the time, so I, I can't tell you. And again, you don't know what you saved it under, right? At the time, sometimes, he changed, he's changed numbers, so if he changed his number, I might not have saved it at the time, so no, I can't see his name right now. So there were some text messages that we already have in evidence between you and Tyler and a third party that have Tyler's name on them. So on April 6th, he was named. So Sustained. <clears throat> Stand up and stretch, folks, but... Uh, Obey the cardinal rules while you're doing that. So, you recall seeing some text messages between yourself, Tyler, and your brother during the course of this trial? Yes. Okay. And the, those mm -hmm. phone messages, I believe, were actually from Keyshawn's phone. Is that correct? Um, correct. Okay. And do you know what Keyshawn called or had his contact saved for Tyler Robinson? No. Okay. And you don't remember what? You, how you saved Tyler Robinson in your phone, correct? Because he gets new numbers, so no, I don't remember. So he gets new numbers? Yeah, some, like, some, like normal people. He's, if he changed his number, sometimes I might not save it. Okay, so since this incident, he's changed his number, is that your testimony? That's not my testimony. I said people change numbers and sometimes they don't get resaved. Okay. That's my testimony. So you don't know whether he changed his number or not, correct? No, I do not. You may. I'll get back to the 
Okay, thank you. No, it is eight. Seven is the big over, oversized uh, consent form. Yes. <laughs> okay. Showing what's been admitted to evidence of states number eight. Take a look at that, please. I'm just going to remove that. Okay. You familiar with this search history? Yeah, it's my search history from my cell phone. It's your search history from your cell phone, right? Right. And the first page, it starts on April 7th of 2021, is that correct? Right. And the very last page concludes at April 15th of 2021, is that correct? Correct. Okay, if you look at the first page, are you on the first, you need another moment to look I'm up? on the first page, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. So at, on April 7th, at 641, I believe it is, you see that, the, that entry? It's about um, a quarter of the way down on the page. Say your ground law. Right. You researched on your cell phone stand your ground law. Is that correct? Correct. On eight, and that was at six forty-one in the morning, right? Yes, after everything happened. Right, a couple of hours after you spoke to Detective Ema, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, the same day on four seven twenty-one, um, at six forty-one in the morning, you also searched stand your ground law in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. On four seven at nine oh one, you searched death penalty in Florida. Is that correct? Right. On four eight of twenty twenty one, you searched accessory to murder. Is that correct? Right. Why were you interested in that? I'm searching on my phone like normal people do when they get into uncomfortable situations. Well, when you searched up that term, accessory to murder, what did you learn? I didn't really learn that much. Okay. I wasn't really looking too hard into it. I just was, i never been in a situation like this, so I just was looking, well, what, literally. What does that mean, accessory to murder? I don't know. You're the lawyer. You tell me. No, you're the one that said you wanted to go to law school, right? I'm a realtor. Okay. Do, you have a, do you have a college degree? No, I have a real estate license. Okay. So on... And why does that matter? On April 8th of 2021, at 1059, you searched up self-defense in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. And then on April 8th at 1059, you searched self-defense, Correct. Correct. And that was only um, a day after this incident, correct? Right. And then on April 12th at 5.35 p.m., you searched Florida, strand, Florida Stand Your Ground. Is that correct? Right. And then on April 13th, um, at 10.39, you searched Mark Shiner, attorney, net worth. Do you remember that? Yes. What, why were you looking at Mr. Shiner's net worth? Because I just knew um, Travis's financials, and I knew he couldn't afford, so I was just curious. Okay, but what does Mr. Shiner's net worth have to do with Travis affording a lawyer? Because I heard he hired him, so I was curious. I heard he was hired, so I was curious. I'm allowed to search anything on my phone. It's not illegal. Okay. On April 13th at 10.51, you searched um, best prosecuting attorney, Palm. You remember that? Palm Beach. Okay. Is that You remember that? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Then you searched on April 13th, 
Uh, you have to remember now at this point, a lot of these aren't just my searches. People are so asking me questions and I'm in using my phone to find certain things. The beginning ones, okay, yes, these definitely were me. But oh, these were other people using your phone now? They're not using my phone. That we're in, having conversations and I'm typing it into my phone. It's not just me sitting there typing all this every single day. You're having discussions with your friends about self defense in Florida, right? Not necessarily about self defense, about the entire situation. Okay, well, you just said that you, some of these things weren't necessarily you. Your friends were talking to you and you were. We're just having an open, you know, when you have an open discussion and you might yourself just type something in your phone. So no I'm one's not. telling me to type anything. No one's forcing me to. And no, I'm just having open discussions with people and I'm typing it in on my own, on my phone. And you're typing it, but mm -hmm. your testimony is that you and your friends or people are having a discussion about self-defense as it relates. That's to not my testimony. I'm asking if that's what you were doing. No. Were you and your friends having a discussion about self-defense as it relates to Mr. Rudolph's conduct? No. I didn't think it was self-defense at all from day one. And why were you looking it up? I wanted to know. Is it a crime for me to look at my phone for Jones, to be knowledgeable? No, don't ask questions. Answer them. Please. Okay, I was trying to be knowledgeable. That's the answer. Because it was relevant. It wasn't relevant. You just look up stuff that has no relevance or that you're not interested about? I look up stuff that I, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable about. That's what I look up about. Okay. All right, there's not going to be any more argument back and forth. Ask the question and you answer the question. Okay. April 13th, 2021, you... Search JetBlue customer service. You remember that? Okay. And then on April 13th of 2021, you searched up pro bono. You remember that? Uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. And then the same day you looked up pro bono lawyer. You remember that? Yes. What, what does pro bono lawyer mean? That's some, that was for something completely different. A pro bono lawyer takes you and they take your case. For free, yeah. It had nothing to do with, no, I wasn't looking for a lawyer. This is something completely separate that you don't even know about. So that's not relevant to the case right now. It happened to be in the same uh, days where you're looking up defense attorney, Mark Shiner net worth, and then you're looking for a free lawyer. And arguing. Next question, please sustain. You te you've testified repeatedly that Keyshawn did not have his gun that night, right? Yes. And you've tested re testified repeatedly that Travis was the one that had the gun, and he's the one that shot Sebastian and Tyler, right? I didn't testify that. I saw it. You saw Travis what? I saw Keyshawn not have his gun. You said tr Keyshawn did not have his gun, right? Correct. Okay. So... Isn't it true that your research regarding self-defense um, would have nothing to do with Keyshawn's conduct since he didn't have a gun? The only one that had a gun, according to you at that time, was Mr. Rudolph. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, that's the question. What's the question? Isn't it true that the reason you researched self-defense had nothing to do with your brother having a gun because you've testified repeatedly he didn't have a gun, right? Correct, he did not have a gun. And according to you, it was my client who had the gun and shot, right? Correct. And self-defense involves the use of a gun, and you're defending yourself. Seriously. Feel free to stand up and stretch, folks. Take a break, actually. In a few. All right, next question on a new subject. All right, well, we'll take a restroom break then for, well, wait a minute, it's almost noon. How much longer have you got? Two minutes. Literally two minutes? Less than two minutes. Okay, go. Until I'm done to go home? Uh, well, after redirect if there is any. And, but we'll take a restroom break after uh, Cross is finished. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Perlette. You looked up self-defense because after speaking with everybody, you believed that somebody was Objection acting in self-defense, right? Last time on that one. 
Weren't you? No. Then why did you look up self-defense? Because I have an iPhone and I can look up anything I want to. On direct examination today with Ms. Edwards, you said you were asked some questions um, about web searches, and you said uh, you did some of the searching in case if I need to turn myself in. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember saying that. And what did you mean by that? I was unaware, unknowledgeable about this entire situation, so I did some research. That's the bottom line of it. Can we please move on from this question? Because you believed you had some culpability that you had. If I believe I had some culpability, I would have never came. I would have came in with a lawyer, a paid one, not a pro bono one. And I would have made sure that I would have never spoke to any law enforcement if I thought anything was going to happen to me. Did I do that? No, I completely from day one agreed, turned my phone in. Anything that was asked of me, I did. So, no, you have it incorrect, and that's the last time I'm speaking on that. So you turned your phone in over a week later after you deleted items from it. No, when, so when they told me to turn my phone in, my phone was turned in. And items were deleted from it, right? And they retrieved them is what I heard. Okay. And you were concerned still, though. Uh, Who wouldn't be concerned? This is not a normal situation. Of course I'm going to be concerned. That's why you said... I needed to do this research to see if I had to turn myself in. I research everything. I research what any little thing I research. I have no I'm a knowledgeable child. I'm sorry if you felt like this was inappropriate to research. All right. Thank you very much. Um, before we take that restroom break, let's find out. Is there going to be any redirect? There will be. Thanks. All right. Okay. We so we will take a restroom break then for 10 minutes. Uh, we'll be back at 1210. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to try to finish with this witness uh, before we take a, a lunch break, all right? <coughs> Pardon me. Leave your pads. Remember and obey the four cardinal rules. No research, no discussion, open mind, and you won't run into any of us, so we don't have to worry about that one.
that no pictures. Okay, and I wanted to delete it now. Okay, and I wanted that now. Yes, please, by all means. All right, welcome back, everyone. Take your seats. All right, you may commence with uh, redirect. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jones, did you love Mr. Rudolph? Like, really love him? Yes. Did you want Mr. Rudolph to die? No. Do you want Mr. Rudolph to die? No. I don't even want him in this position right now, honestly. Okay. Um, I assume you love your brother. More than anybody in the world. And that you loved Sebastian? Yeah, I did. And, and do. And that you love Tyler? Yes. Stain. So I think the question everybody wants to know is that if you loved everybody, did you orchestrate a murder of your boyfriend? Overruled. Did you? No. I didn't expect anybody to get injured that night. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things you were asked about on cross-examination. When you met Travis Rudolph, was he still the NFL star with all the money that he had from that contract? Sustained. What was... Travis Rudolph's financial state at the time when you two started a romantic relationship? If you know, do you know the answer to that question? Yes, I know the answer to that question That's very well. Answer. He didn't have money at all. He was financially struggling. He wasn't in the NFL anymore, and he didn't have a job because of COVID, so he was struggling. Become romantically attached with Mr. Rudolph because you were hoping that there would be a payoff at some point? Rephrase. Sustain. Did you ever hope that things would get better financially? Overruled. I can speak. Um, no, it was never the case because I didn't know he was going to the CFL, remember, until later on in the relationship. So I didn't even know that he was going to the CFL until later on. I didn't know his contract. I never asked him, never looked up his contract, anything like that. So, no, there was no financial beneficial. Sustain. Next question. That's fine. 
pass. Why did you love Mr. Rudolph? Was it financial or his person? Him. Overruled. Why, him. Why did you love him? Financial or his him? Him. I loved him. I loved him. You were asked about the video camera footage from the rain camera on the day April 6, 2017, sort of as it got darker and um, Daryl Rudolph was present. Do you remember that? Mm. The ring video of you actually getting um, put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So um, you referenced that there were two separate times that you were put on the ground. Obviously, we watched one. Correct. Where did the other one occur? Same place. Daryl was trying to push him back and get him away. And it happened same place, just a different timing. And did you do anything to manipulate the recording system so that it didn't capture that? No, I don't. I thought it was going to all be captured originally because it is a ring light, but I guess it doesn't work that way. All right. So when you're talking about getting put on the ground by Mr. Rudolph, um, what exactly physically happened to your person? Um... So sure, I had cosmetic surgery. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I didn't. It's 2023. Um, my back and my bottom part of my butt like was physically hurt because I was only about like six weeks post-op. So I was still healing. They tell you about like eight weeks and I was injured. Like out of second time he slammed me, I was out of breath from his slam. So what I want to know and what I'm sure the jury is interested in is the mechanics of what actually happened. Where were you held and how were you put to the ground? Basically up here and like grab by one foot. And Sorry, then just because the recording is audio only, I need you to t identify the parts of your body. Okay, so basically it's shoulders and one foot and then like fell back to the ground. Like he pushed me back to the ground. So you're not... Are you saying that he, like, lifted you off the ground? I'm not saying it was, like, <laughs> up in the air, like, above his head or anything like that. No. But he lifted my body off of the ground. My feet were not planted on the ground when I fell down and hit the rock part of his house. I want to talk to you about some of the things you were asked about your phone records and what time people called you and you said you didn't remember. What's going on there? Why don't you remember the exact times uh, when people were calling or you called someone? I, sh the way that she was addressing it, I wasn't understanding. If she's asking me, was I calling during the shooting? Yes, I was calling them, like I was blowing my brother's phones up and things like that because I haven't heard from them. But when I'm on the phone with my friend, I'm just thinking they're with other girls or they're doing something. I'm not thinking there's a shooting at that moment in time. Her chronological order kind of confused me because she's discussing the hospital phone call, then she's discussing the house phone call. There were several different phone calls that were had. Okay. So just so it's very clear for the jury. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Did you call your brother, Keyshawn, after he left the house in Delray? No. So you never called him? He left the house. So let me just make sure we're understanding. Yeah. That. I'm talking about you get home from coming from Mr. Rudolph's residence. Okay. And Keyshawn is now leaving your residence in Delray. Okay. Did you ever call Keyshawn Jones, your brother? between the time that he left the residence at that moment until whenever else was the next time you saw him? Yes, I blew their phones up because um, I didn't hear anything from them. So you were, when you say blow their phones up, are you talking about multiple calls? I'm calling multiple times. Now, earlier um, in the cross-examination, you were asked why those calls were not on your call log. Do you remember that question? Yeah. And during your direct examination, we had discussed that. That Do you recall that about the fact that you use multiple apps to make calls? Yes. Yeah, so that's another thing that I don't think she really understood. You can speak on different FaceTime audio. You can speak on FaceTime. You can speak on tons of other different 
devices. So that could possibly be a reason why it's not popping up on her phone, her evidence. So let's um, make sure everybody understands the call log that was in evidence or is, is in evidence. Mm -hmm. What form of calling is that, if you recall? It's probably going to be regular phone call. So any calls made on, say, WhatsApp, Instagram, or anything else would not be captured there? I don't think it would, no, to my knowledge. Did you delete anything besides the text messages? No. So you did not delete calls? No, I didn't delete anything. The only thing I deleted was the shoot his shit up. And I've said that since day one. I haven't deleted anything else. And then you did not then delete, obviously, web searches either. No, you guys have the web searches. I'm not, there's nothing to hide. Like, I, I Googled it. I'm not going to lie about it. Now, you were asked a lot about web searches and why you chose to make those searches. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall that? I'm 23. No, 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 no. I'm not getting into your reason at this point. Do you recall being asked those questions? Yes. And um, is that the kind of person that you are? You're always on your phone Googling something? I'm just very informative. I, I like to know what's going on. Um, just like my brother, I'm extremely intelligent. I like to know what's going on. I, I like to be aware of my surroundings. I like to play chess, not checkers. So I definitely googled whatever i googled because i wanted to just be aware of what was going on i've never been in a situation like this before okay are you lying to the story about anything that you said sustain i'm not have you jury disregard that last statement please next question miss jones did you sign your brother Keyshawn jones over to mr Rudolph. Travis Rudolph's residence to kill him or shoot him? Absolutely not, and it sounds absurd, and it sounds crazy for anyone to ever think that. When uh, Mr. Jones left the residence, you said earlier in your testimony that you saw his weapon, the firearm that he had purchased in his room. Is that correct? Correct. Who did you know was going with Keyshawn to the residence? Tyler. That Travis lived at? Tyler. Okay. So you were, obviously you had spoken to Mr. Robinson, Tyler Robinson. Correct. Those were the first two people I called after the incident. Okay. When did you learn that it was other people also present? When I DJ started saying like, oh, that dreadhead nigga, like he's going to die, da, 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 I put two and two together and I realized he was talking about Sebastian because they're always together. I, I know that they're always together. So I'm not going to act oblivious like, oh, I, I, they probably wouldn't end up together that night, but they, he was not called to go over to the residence. Let me see if I understand this. You knew for sure who was going and then realized who came. Exactly. Ms. Jones, you were asked about whether or not you felt guilty about the situation. And you yes. answered yes. Yes. Can you explain to the members of the jury what you meant? Of course, um, 100%. Um, so basically, I'm the type of person I'm just going to say right now, I don't really wear my emotions on my sleeve, but Keyshawn. Okay. Overruled. Go ahead. Finish your answer, please. Um, I'm a, the type of person who doesn't wear my emotions on my sleeve. So um, I might come off kind of cold or I might come off like the situation hasn't affected me, but it has. Um, even on Travis's behalf, because I do love him. Is there an objection? What's the objection? The legal objection? Is what? It's, it's an I'm not calling. Overruled. Him. Just finish the answer the, to, to the question, if you yes. will, please. I want you to tell the jury why you feel guilty. 
I feel guilty because the situation should have never ended the way it should. That's why I feel guilty. Do you feel guilty because you wanted this to happen? I didn't want this to happen. One moment to confirm. Yes, ma'am. In retrospect, should you have just called the police instead of asking your brother to talk? Definitely. Nothing further. All right. Very well. Thanks. Any reason why Ms. Um, Jones can't go on about her day? No, you are. All right. Thank you. Ms. Jones, watch your steps. Stay safe. All right. Now's a good time for a lunch break, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we need to take apparently a little longer than, than I allowed for yesterday. There's been a request that, uh, that we start off at 45 minutes if... Um, if that's long enough. If it is, uh, raise your hands, please. One, two, three, four. Okay, so an hour then? Is that good enough? All right, looks like it's virtually uh, unanimous at an hour. So it's uh, 1225. We'll round it off to uh, 1230. So be back, please, at 130. Remember and obey the four cardinal rules while you're out there. It is conceivable you'll see one of us out there. So uh, duck, duck us, we'll duck you. No research, no discussion. Keep an open mind. You've heard a lot, but not nearly all of it yet. All right. See you at one thirty. They're free to go. Yeah. All right. So let me talk to the lawyers real quickly while they're
Well, actually, something we can handle before the uh, jury comes in. Um, bless her heart, Judge uh, Weiss has volunteered to cover my morning docket again tomorrow morning. Yeah, we do. Uh, both of us, because you were on my trial on Friday as well, right? Or is that somebody else now? A week from Friday. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, but you've been noticeably quiet every time I've mentioned next Friday. And the fact I got a... Yeah, okay, well, that's true. That's true. However, we can't, uh, we can't put that one off. All right, um, so we should be able to get started. Uh, the long and short of it is we should be able to get started tomorrow at about 8 again, so, okay. if, if, so long as the jury is able to get in. And Judge, I did prepare the decision. I just need Ms. Ellis. Need somebody to, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that before. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, you're going to have him here before we bring the jury in? You want to do it that way? That's fine with me. As long as he's sworn in in front of the jury. Yeah, that works. All right. <clears throat> Yes, by all means. All right, and so when do you have him? It's just the next business day. Okay. And I will provide all the services. Yes. Um, white male. Jury, or how do you want it? You don't, doesn't matter to you? Okay, great. Then let's bring him in first. Bring the jury in first? No, bring him in first. Thank you. Okay, all right, fine. <clears throat>
Stay seated, folks. <clears throat> you only signed it once, so you'll have to make a photocopy and then a certified copy and follow with your service. Oh, all right. So, yep, 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 yep. Thank you. All right, welcome back, everyone. Go ahead and take your seats, except for you, sir. You've got to be sworn in. <clears throat> got to say that a little louder. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead and take your seat, please. <clears throat> Okay, when you're comfortable, will you please say and spell both your first and last name for the record, sir? My name is Christopher Lowe, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-L-O-W-E. L-O-W-E? Yes, sir. Lowe, that's it? Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, you may inquire, Ms. Edwards. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Lowe, how old are you? I am 23 years old. Right, so back... That's correct. And can you tell me how you know someone by the name of Keyshawn Jones? Keyshawn Jones, me and Keyshawn went to the same middle school and high school. Um, we met in eighth grade. We've been became great friends in uh, the ninth grade, and we've been great friends since then. And how close are you to Mr. Jones? Um, I would say my relationship with Keyshawn, we are brotherly like. We um, I stay with his mom. He stays with me. We we're literally brothers. So when you say stay, you mean you're over each other's houses. 
Well, we, yeah, when we were younger, but now we're actually roommates and we lived in the same house. Isn't like we're, he's my brother with the, from a different mother. Um, do you know his sister, Dominique? Yes, I do. And how would you describe? Her? Um, I didn't really get to meet her. Like, I don't really talk to her as much. Uh, me, whenever me and Keyshawn would talk, most it would be like playing the game or something like that. But I didn't really meet her until I was like 20 or 20 years old. Type. So um, for your relationship with Dominique, that would have been then later, closer to the time when this happened. Exactly, yes. And would you say that you thought of her in front of Of course, yeah. We've had nothing but good encounters. Um, there's nothing I can say wrong about her. Um, what about someone by the name of Tyler Robinson? How do you know that person? Uh, me and Tyler, we grew up together, went to the same elementary school, um, came really close in sixth grade when we had a class. And would you also describe your relationship with Mr. Robinson as very close, sort of like uh, Jones? Exactly, yes, we were all brothers. by the name of Sebastian. How did you meet Sebastian? Um, we all went to the same high school. We were all cool. We all hanged around the same friends. Uh, we were all in the same group, so basically uh, just high school. And back in uh, April when this incident happened in 2021, were you uh, working in school? Tell us a little bit about what you were doing actually about that time i think it was like the unemployment time and i would just work out and um do deliveries on like doordash and like what about now now i, I work in a restaurant i want to bring your attention to the day april 6 2021 when this all started do you recall whether or not um, someone, anyone reached out to you about something happening to Dominique Jones? Yeah, so I would say around 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, I received a phone call from Tyler saying that Travis Rudolph put his hands on um, Keyshawn's sister. And um, did you have an immediate reaction to that, or what, what happened? Well, at first I was confused, but since I, I thought he was joking, but not like, Anyway, I thought I wouldn't know what was happening, but I was just thinking about her recovering from her surgery that she had, and it was just wrong for me to hear somebody putting their hands on her. So when you say you were confused, were you acquainted with Mr. Rudolph Travis? No, I never met him, never seen him, nothing. Did you know that Dominique even had a boyfriend? I've heard of him, um, but never never knew nothing about him. You had no personal interaction with Mr. Rudolph? No. Um, you mentioned that you knew that she had recently had surgery. Um, were you aware that she was still recovering from that? Yes. Um, did you at some point meet up with um, Mr. Robinson on the night of April 6th of 2021? Yes. So once I heard the phone call, uh, once I got the phone, from, phone call from Ty, I took a shower and then I just went to his house. When you say Ty, I assume you're talking about Tyler Robinson. Yes, correct, Tyler. All right. Um, and when you got to Mr. Robinson's residence, um, do you know whether or not anyone else was present, any of your friends? It was Tyler, his brother, and his brother's friend. So Mr. Robinson, Tyler, hit Tyler's brother. Yeah. And then whom else? Uh, his brother had a friend over. I'm, I'm not sure. So some other gentleman. Exactly. Okay. And was Keyshawn there yet? No. Um, what about uh, Sebastian? No, he was not. While you were at Mr. Robinson's residence, um, was there a discussion about a plan as to what you all would do, if anything, about what you had heard regarding Ms. Jones? No. And what was discussed? Without going into grave details, just general topic. Honestly, we were just sitting on the couch, playing the game, listening to music while we waited for Keyshawn and uh, Sebastian. How would you characterize how you were feeling at that point? Um, I wasn't too 
I wasn't thinking about the situation as much in that time. I was just hanging out, waiting for Keyshawn and Tyler, but just still, like, destroyed by the news. All right. At some point, did Keyshawn Jones arrive? Yeah, Keyshawn um, arrived. And when Keyshawn arrived, can you tell us whether or not there was any discussion at that point uh, regarding firearms? So, yeah, me and Keyshawn, we all, we kind of were thinking about what we're going to do. Uh, I know Keyshawn said, uh, I don't want to bring any weapons to this. Be Sustain. <clears throat> you may. If there's an applicable exception, I'll listen to it. Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mr. Lowe, do you know whether or not Keyshawn Jones had his firearm on his person? I do not 100% know, but I know that we had a conversation where he said, we are not going to... I can't say that? Okay. Nope. I don't know. You're not telling us what any other person said. Um, did you see him produce a firearm at no. any point during your interaction that night? No. What about uh, Sebastian? Did you no. see him produce a firearm at any point in your interaction that whole night? No. So you advise that there was some kind of discussion, and again, without going into what anybody said, did you at some point leave the residence? Yes. Okay. Whose vehicle did you take in order to leave the residence? We took um, Keyshawn's mom's car. So that's the black Cadillac? Yes. Okay. And um, was Keyshawn the driver or someone else? Keyshawn was driving. What about you? Where were you seated when you were headed over to Mr. Rudolph's residence? I was sitting in the back left passenger seat. So directly behind the driver? That's correct. Did you see Mr. Robinson with a firearm? No, I did not. At any point throughout the night of 4, um, April 6, 2021, going into the early morning hours of April 7, 2021, same question I've been asking about the others, did you see Mr. Robinson brandish, pull out a firearm at any point? No, I did not. Now, can you tell me what the plan was once you got to Mr. Rudolph's residence? Um, there wasn't a plan. We didn't really think about anything to do in a certain way. We just showed up, we parked, and we just knocked on the door. Do you know why the decision was made not to park directly in front of the Rudolph residence? Um, I don't know. I wasn't driving, so I can't tell you. Was there any discussions about that N happening? No, we was just playing music, and then we just ended up parking. When you um, exited the vehicle, do you recall whether or not you put anything inside the trunk of the vehicle, the Cadillac? No. Where did you keep your cell phone if you have one? I kept my phone in uh, my pockets because I had zippers on the side, so I know it would be safe. Um, you said you had zippered pockets? Yeah, like Adidas pants, they come with zippers on them. They're wearing Adidas pants with zippers and the phone was inside the pocket? Correct. Did you have anything else in your pockets that you can recall? Possibly keys, but I don't think so. When you arrived at Mr. Rudolph's residence, um, were you familiar with his home or that particular neighborhood? No, no I've never been there. When you got to the door of the residence, um, what happened? 
I don't remember who knocked on the door first. Um, I don't believe it was Keyshawn. It was either Sebastian or Tyler. Uh, but someone knocked on the door, and I believe his brother came out first. Okay. You said I believe. Did you know the individual that came No, I don't. I didn't know him. So some other male, to your knowledge, not the defendant. Exactly. And when the young man opened the door, um, how was his demeanor towards you all? Um, he wasn't completely aggressive. Uh, I think he kind of knew why we was there, but he wasn't. He was just kind of talking. Okay, so seemed relatively normal. Exactly. What about? Um, did anyone ask to speak specifically to Travis? Um, so yeah, we were just like, we were just requesting Travis. Uh, we didn't really know who he was or who that was. Yeah, we just wanted to talk to Travis. Okay. When you say we, I just want you to focus on what you know and what you said. Okay, so I I was not saying anything. I seen um, Tyler and Sebastian say, where is Travis? Okay. Did at some point the gentleman that they believe to be Travis exit the residence? Yes, I think that was after his mom came out, but then, yes, he did come out. When Mr. Rudolph exited the residence, and of course, now you know who Travis Rudolph is, is that correct? Yes, I know who that is. So when Mr. Rudolph exited the residence, um, can you tell me about his demeanor? Uh, he came out with his shirt off, already mad, um, and he was already riled up. Did you see any of the people that you were with or yourself um, approach him in any way, Mr. Rudolph? No, um, we were really trying to have a conversation, but I feel like he came out on um, with a different type of energy and timing. Like, um, at some point after Mr. Rudolph exits the residence and you are all now interacting outside of the residence, can you tell me what took place? Was there any conversation that you recall between Mr. Rudolph and you all? So there really wasn't much conversation. It was more of like just talking back, like arguing back and forth. But um, within a couple of seconds of into it, he just looked at all of us and then he, he um, body slammed Keyshawn. What do you mean by body slam? Um, he charged at Keyshawn, he picked him off the floor, and he slammed him. Are you talking about uh, picking up off the floor, like all the way up, or describe for us so we understand? Um, he, I would say it was more like a scoop. He grabbed his legs and then kind of take him down. So sort of similar to a tackle. Exactly. When you saw that, um, what, if anything, was your reaction? Well, everybody, uh, once he picked up Keyshawn, uh, then I would say Tyler jumps in, his brother jumps in, then me and Sebastian, we all just jump in into a fight. So if we're understanding you correctly, at this point, it's essentially a brawl right there in the front. Correct. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Do you see anyone at all with any any kind of weapon at that point? No, I do not. So then, um, does that mean it was a fist fight? That's correct. Mr. Lowe, why did you accompany Mr. Jones over to Mr. Rudolph's residence? Um, Keyshawn is like my brother, um, so, and Keyshawn's sister, that's like my sister as well, so I just, I will never leave Keyshawn, um, by his side, by himself, um, it's just that kind of relationship we have, and I, like I said, I just felt bad because his sister literally was rec recovering from surgery, and she got slammed, so. All right. Um... Did you um, bring any weapons with you? No, I did not. So just your cell phone and the keys that you had? Correct. As the fist fight is happening on the ground, um, describe what kind of fist fight. Is it 
the kind where blood is now being drawn or describe it for us? No, I mean, it was two people fighting one person. So I would say me and Sebastian was fighting his brother and Tyler and Keyshawn was fighting Travis, but it wasn't a bloody fight or people going home with black eyes. Like it wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, as this um, scuffle, melee fight is happening outside, um, do you see or are you able to see where the mom is? Yeah, the mom was standing right in the driveway with her something on her phone. She just kept saying, she just kept trying to show us something on the phone, which we couldn't really look at because we were fighting. Did there ever come a point where there was a break or pause in the fighting? Yeah, there was a pause where Travis was trying to go into his house to go get a gun, but Sebastian said, why are you going to get a gun if we're right here? And he did not get the gun, so he just kept fighting. So um, let's just make sure I, or we understand this um, cr chronology, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you said there was one instance where Mr. Rudolph attempted to enter the residence but did not actually go inside. Exactly. At any point during all of what you just described to us, the, from the point of knocking on the door to um, the point where we just ended with Mr. Rudolph not going into the house, do you recall whether or not there were any weapons at all outside, any knives, firearms, anything? No, I don't recall no, any weapons. All right. So I just want to make sure that I understand your answer. Did you see any weapons? I did not see any weapons, no. Because your response was, I do not recall any weapons, so I want to make sure. No, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I did not see any weapons. So there were no weapons? There well. was no weapons. Did the fighting continue, or did it fizzle at that point? So, yeah, after um, that pause, um, we began fighting um, again. Because he didn't, he didn't decide to go into the house. He just, okay, I'm going to keep fighting. So that's what he did. Um, his mom was still there. His brother is still trying to fight. And then we had a, another pause, which was um, right at the front of his house by the sidewalk, like by his car or whatever. Um, and we're looking at each other like, what are we doing? And then Travis then punches Tyler again to make us start fighting again. So it sounds like fighting, pause, fighting, pause, fighting again. Exactly. When Tyler is punched by Mr. Rudolph, uh, that's Travis, not the brother. Is that correct? Travis, yes. Um, what happens from there? You said new fighting, but physically what's happening? So we're fighting. We're just continuing to fight. It was more like a one-on-one -on -one for a quick second with Tyler and uh and uh, Travis, and then um, me and Keyshawn were kind of looking at each other like, like this is getting out of hand. Like we got to kind of get everybody together to go. So that's when we try to make our like effort to leave. Uh, what kind of efforts were you making? Basically, just trying to rally everybody together, and then Keyshawn was trying to um, go to the car to, to get it started. So um, the car in question was parked. Um, I think we discussed this already, away from the Rudolph residence, correct? Exactly. Oh, exactly, yes. Okay. So did you actually leave the area of the Rudolph residence? Yes, I left the area and I went down to where the car was parked. You went down the streets? Exactly. What about Keyshawn? Keyshawn also left with me. Um, were you closer to Keyshawn than you were to Tyler and Sebastian? Yes. Did you notice uh, the brother and where he was in relation to either you and Keyshawn or Tyler and Sebastian? Yes, so when me and Keyshawn uh, left, and we kind of left uh, Sebastian and Tyler, so I uh, noticed that and I turned around to see that Sebastian was still fighting um, his brother by himself. While Keyshawn was still starting the car up, I left the car, went back to there, and then helped Sebastian in his situation. 
let me see if I understand this correctly. Where is that fight happening between Sebastian and the brother? It's outside of his house, but not directly in front of it. It's on in the street to the left. You may. It's okay. Actually, deputy, yes. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm going to be handing you uh, this larger map. It states 1B. And I want you to take a look at it and let me know whether or not um, you are now familiar with this area where the incident happened such that you could identify the residence where Mr. Rudolph lived at the time. I could identify it. Yes. All right. Um, if I could have the witness step down and be able to publish um, for purposes of aiding in his testimony. Yes, you may. And I suggest using the wooden pointer. Thank you. That's here as well, Judge. Thank you. Just to make sure everybody can see. All right, make sure, Mr. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Lowe, can you identify for us with the pointer whereabouts Mr. Rudolph's residence was? He lives right here. Okay. So, when you're talking about that fight happening between Mr. Rudolph's brother, Daryl, and uh, Sebastian, whereabouts is that fight taking place? I would say this is happening somewhere around this area. I just remember this tree casting a shadow on the um, on the street, and they were fighting inside the shadow of the tree. So it had to be somewhere right here. So based on where you're pointing now on the map, it looks like the Rudolph's property has not ended. Um, exactly, yes. Okay, so this fight is still taking place on the Rudolph residence, um, but not obviously in the front yard. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like the side of the property. Yeah. Okay, and as that fight is happening between Sebastian um, and uh, Mr. Rudolph's brother, Darrow, um, can you tell me whether or not that's also the location you returned to in order to assist Sebastian. Yeah, I came back from here and I ran back to around here. Okay, and when you went up there, what kind of assistance did you provide? Basically, it was just me and Sebastian kind of jumping his brother. And explain for the members of the jury what jumping means. Oh, well, you, just two people fighting one person, I guess, yeah. If you... Okay, so um, is that a fist fight or is that firearms weapons uh, we uh, it was just a fist fight I didn't have no weapons okay what about Sebastian did you see him with any weapons with the brother at that point or any other point never I've never seen it okay so um, what happened with the fight between the brother um, you now and Sebastian um, what happened with sorry could you repeat your question yes what happened how did the fight end if it did um, so I basically just created enough uh, space and time for me and Sebastian to both get away, and then we uh, we met up with Keyshawn back at the car. Now, did you see Mr. Rudolph enter the home? Me personally, no, I did not. And why was that? Where were you? I was already back at the car trying to leave. Okay. So by the time, as far as you know, Mr. Rudolph exits his residence, you're already whereabouts on the map? I would say we were right before this turn, the car was parked, like right here. Okay, so much closer to your car. Exactly. Okay. Um, did you actually get in the car before any shots were fired by Mr. Rudolph? Um, yes, but I didn't have, it was just probably a split second after. All right. Um, if you could return to the witness stand, thank you. You can just leave this pointer right there on the desk. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um.
Um, I am also going to be utilizing that ring video. Um, if we could have a moment to set that up, Jeff. Sure. Oh, yeah. And that state's exhibit what? Uh, so we're going to be using page 32. 32. All right. Just a little while we're waiting for that to be set up. Do you recall whether or not you were wearing clothes on the night of this incident? Yes, I was wearing clothes. Both uh, top and uh, shorts um, or, or pants? Yeah, I was wearing a, I don't remember what shirt, but I know I was wearing pants. Um, and you know you were wearing something covering the top of your Yeah, I never took my shirt off. Back then, was your hair styled differently? Yeah, I just cut my hair. And um, how was it styled then? Did you have a um, shortcut like this or dreads or anything else? Or yeah, I had uh, dreads. So that's the locking type style? Yeah, I had long uh, dreads. And how long were they about that time? Well, they weren't that long, actually. At that time, it was two, like two years ago. They were probably like down to my forehead. So not too long. So enough that they would be like sort of halfway down your face, but not enough to come to your shoulders. Exactly. Do you see yourself in this uh, screenshot here where it's paused? Yeah, I do. Okay. And could you identify which individual is you? Uh, the person in the back with the white, with the t-shirt. Okay. So that's you, the last person sort of making its way up that walkway? Yes. Okay. And um, there's a bulge there in your right pocket. Do you know what that item is? That item would be my cell phone. Okay. Are you sure? I'm 100% positive. Okay. Um, and do you recognize any of the other individuals that are visible now? I, well, I can only see Keyshawn, so. Okay, so Keyshawn, is that the person in the forefront? With the hoodie okay. on. So Keyshawn had his hoodie up? Yes. Okay, if you could keep playing. Who's the gentleman with the longer braids um, behind Keyshawn, sort of in front of you right now? Uh, that's Sebastian. Okay. And where is Tyler? Tyler is on the right side with his shirt off. Okay, so that's the gentleman with his shirt off. Yes. Okay. Um, and I see you shaking your head. What that? What's that about? Honestly, I just never seen this footage, so it's just actually just news to me. Okay. All right, if you could let it play. And if you could go to the very next one. Turn it off, please. In fact, 
and get it out of here. All right, if you could pause it there, that's great. Um, so as this interaction is happening, have you ever seen this video before, by the way? No, this is all um, my first time seeing it. Okay. Do you recognize the individual that's in the forefront of the video right now? Yes, I do. Okay. And who's that? It's Travis. All right. So at the time Mr. Rudolph is actually entering the residence, are you one of those individuals that are out there by the street? I would assume so, but I can't 100% see, so. Okay. If you could take it back, if there is a back, and just let it play so he can see. Pause oh, it. So there appear to be four individuals. Um, can you tell whether or not any of the individuals were you? And you can go back. If Do you need to see it again? I mean, it more than likely was me, but I can't literally see it from this footage. But I'm okay. not sure it would be of assistance, but Mr. Lowe can step down and use that pointer, perhaps, if that... Mr. Lowe, uh, the judge is uh, giving you permission to step <clears throat> down so you can get closer to the screen. It may help, it may not, I don't know. Okay, if we could play. Okay, so let's go back a little bit so we can identify which one you're referring to. Okay, so back up a little bit if you could with the video. Uh, all right, you can stop it here. I'm this guy right here. So sort of the skinnier image that's away closer to the roadway. Exactly. Okay. So second in line there of the four people that we're seeing. Yes. Okay. All right. If you could let it play. You could pause it. Did you see Mr. Rudolph coming out here? Um, no, I did not. I was set on getting to the car. Okay, so you are already running back to the car at this point. Exactly, because earlier I already seen him try to go for his gun, so I knew that this time he was going to get it for real. Okay, so you're heading out of town, basically, running back to the car. I was trying to get gone, yes. Okay, um, if you could let it play. Pause that. Were there any other females outside besides the mom? No. Okay. Um, and um, are you able to recognize anybody else in that video as you were watching? I mean, I seen uh, Tyler and Sebastian. If we could play that back so he can identify who those people are. All right. Um, did you, are you able to tell us um, of the other individuals with you there, um, who's who? Not from this part. It was like later at the end of the video. All right. So um, please let Mr. Clausy know when to stop. All right. I think it's just better if you let it play and then he'll stop you. Yeah. No. I think this, this right here is uh, Tyler, and then uh, me and SB were already gone down the street. And SB is Sebastian? Sebastian, yes, yeah, Sebastian. So you, Sebastian, Keyshawn are now gone running towards the vehicle? Yes. And you said that person that's still remaining out there on the street is Tyler Robinson? Yes, correct. Okay, all right, thank you. And if you could let it play? Pause it there. Um, did you hear? 
Were you able to hear all that yelling as you were there in person? All right, no. Um, I was even focused on that. I was just focused on getting back to the car. Okay. Um, and you were, by that point, further away? Yeah, on the map, I was almost a block away. All right, thank you so much. That person, the voice I was saying, you got that. Did you recognize that voice? Um, I couldn't clearly hear, but I believe that was Tyler. We can play it again. Just yeah. Sure. And it's sort of just towards the end of that video. <laughs> that yes, that's definitely Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> what does you got that mean if you know basically we were surrendering basically saying we already fought we like this night is over you got it you clearly have the gun out and we don't want any more problems further than this is there any fighting happening at that point no because i was leaving Keyshawn was leaving sebastian was leaving and tyler was still left behind but and obviously we can see Tyler on the video. He doesn't appear to be engaged in a fight with anyone. No, I mean, yes, that's correct. Um, did you see at any point, once you said you um, got to the vehicle, whether or not Tyler made his way to the vehicle? So as I was um, running to get back to the car, um, I kind of wasn't really looking behind me. Um, it was more tunnel vision. I would say I, um, as I got into the back seat of the car, I felt a push to um, then get on the floor into the car, but I never fully like got to see Tyler. Okay. So um, could you tell whether or not Keyshawn was already in the vehicle? Keyshawn was 100% already in the vehicle. Okay. And what about uh, Sebastian? Sebastian was 100% already in the vehicle. And then you said you got in and you felt a push. Exactly. Did you know whether or not it was one of your friends that pushed you or someone else? It was, it would have to be Tyler because he was the last person left. Um, do you know if Tyler actually fully made it into the vehicle? I... No problem. Okay, sorry about that. The question was, um, did you see whether or not Tyler Robinson made his way back to the vehicle and actually inside? Um, I did not 100% see Tyler um, get back in the car. Okay. Um, do you recall um, whether or not, as you were in the vehicle, whether or not your vehicle that you were in started moving at all? Um, I believe there was a like a quick second where he threw the car in drive and then let off the gap, like the brake, and it moves a little bit. But then I wouldn't even say one second later, less than a second later, a whole bunch of um, gunshots just start flying into the car. And was that the first round of gunshots that were flying at the car? Yeah, I would say it was like the only round. It was just pure shooting nonstop. So. so it sounds like, um, was Keyshawn the driver again? Keyshawn was the driver. And where was Sebastian seated? Sebastian was in um, the front uh, passenger seat to the right. And you said you ducked down. What way were you facing? Um, like I kind of like got pushed in. So once everything, like as soon as I got pushed in, I hit the floor and then it, the bullets just started coming in. Um, what happened with the vehicle? Did it ever make its way to actually speed off? Um, no. So when somebody's uh, shooting at you with a big gun, um, it disables the car and it's, we weren't able to drive while getting shot at. So no. So the vehicle was sort of just like stopped for a while. No, we I wouldn't say it stopped because we were able to get away from the situation. But while he was shooting at us, 
um, we weren't able to drive because we're getting shot at. Um, did you think something had happened to Keyshawn? Um, while the shooting was happening, it was, uh, I heard Sebastian, I didn't think anything happened to Keyshawn to answer your question, but I heard Sebastian say, I got hit. And then the shooting kept going after that. So, and I have to ask, was uh, Sebastian fully in the vehicle as that was what you just described? Was Sebastian was fully in the vehicle, doors closed, ready to go. What about the door next to you in the back seat? Was that open or closed? I do not remember. I was laying down, trying not to get shot. So obviously, there are two doors at the back of a Cadillac. Um, there would have been one on the left and one on the right. So right behind the driver's side and the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Were both doors open or just, if possibly, one? Um, no. Uh, we got in. Me and Tyler both got in through the uh, back left door. And from the back left door, I dove onto the back right side. If that makes so sense. then that would have been over on the driver's side of the Cadillac? Could you... what? Sorry, the side where Keyshawn was. So the like you know, his door. I got in through that through the back left door, and I jumped down into the back back right side on the floor. Okay. So I moved over. Understood. No, I I don't. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Judge, I'm going to ask a clarifying. Okay, question. go ahead. Okay, so when you jump in, are you essentially jumping closer to where Sebastian is seated? over on his side of the vehicle, or are you closer to where um, Keyshawn is seated on his side of the vehicle? I was closer to the uh, right side of the car on Ke um, no, Sebastian's side. left or right, I think. Sorry, sorry, confusing. sorry. I was closer to um, Sebastian's side, the passenger side. Okay, so you dove in and went to Sebastian's side. Exactly. Okay, so you dove in from the driver's side of the vehicle, headed toward the passenger side. Yeah. Got it. Did you see anyone in your vehicle with a firearm? No, I never saw anybody with a firearm. Did you see anybody retrieve a firearm and attempt to try to pull it up or hold it up? No, I did not see anything like that. What was happening in the car as the shots were being fired? <laughs> um, I was ducking for my life. Keyshawn was ducking for his life. And like I said, I heard Sebastian, uh, say he got shot and the firing still happened after that so so during your early testimony you said eventually you all were able to drive away from the location sort of tell us a little bit about how that happened once the shooting stopped um we waited a little second then i was able to um like poke my head up and see what's happening Keyshawn poked his head up and then he just through the car and drive without thinking. We then made the right turn. It's right there on the map. Um, and then that's when I grabbed my phone out of my pocket and I started to call the um, hospital or just 911 in general. Um, then once we're driving down the street, I'm we're looking. Pause you there first. Yeah, no problem. You said you took out your phone. Um, and what did you do? Did you actually physically make a call or were you looking for hospitals? I wasn't sure what you were saying. So we were looking for directions to the hospital, but we also did call uh, 911. When was 911 called? Do you recall? I would say as soon as we um, made the right turn that we were like not completely out of the reach, but like, compl like far enough that if we felt safe enough, I guess, to call them. Do you remember whether or not the vehicle was pulled over by that point? No, the vehicle was not pulled over at that point. So the call started before the vehicle was stopped? Yes. Did there come a point where the vehicle did um, stop or become inoperable? Yeah, so after the vehicle got shot up, a lot um the car just stopped working so we were forced to just pull over to some um abandoned building or whatever building that was how were you feeling 
um, there was a lot of emotions going through all at the same time because I really didn't know what just happened. Um, at that exact time, my one objective was just to try to help um, Sebastian because, like I said, he said he got shot and then he wasn't really um, moving that much or anything. So he wasn't responsive at that point? I, no, he wasn't. Now, we've taken this sort of gradually, you know, point by point, but did this all happen sort of in a short period of time or was it over longer minutes? Um, yeah, it just felt like everything kind of happened fast. Like, By the time you got to the location where the vehicle was now inoperable, did you exit the vehicle at any point? Um, yeah, as soon as we pulled over, I got out of the car, I went to the front um side where Sebastian was sitting, and I was kind of not like sh shaking him, but like kind of trying to touch him, like trying to see if he was okay. And then that's when I, um, I heard the police car right behind me. So I waved them down and then they pulled over and then they helped us. So then if that front passenger side door where Sebastian was seated was open, that was opened by you? Yes. Um, when you saw Sebastian, um, was he able to breathe, say anything, do anything at that point? Mm, no, not really. Um, when the officer uh, was flagged down and came over to where you all were. Well, it is leading. So I will rephrase, staying. Judge. Play it. Thank you. Um, can you tell us what happened next after you saw the officer? Um, the officer just, he separated um, me and Keyshawn from the car where Sebastian was sitting. And then um, just more people, more police officers came on the scene. How'd you get the officer's attention? When I got out the car? No, no, no. How'd you get the officer's attention when you saw him? I, I waved him down and then I just pointed him like, he needs help, he needs help. And then he's like, okay, just back away. Like he separated us in a way. So the officer separated you both from the vehicle and each other, meaning you and Keyshawn? Yes. Um, did you know whether or not um, there were any hospitals close by? Were you able to figure that out, either you or Keyshawn with the phone? Um, no, because it didn't even matter because the car stopped working. Even if there was one two minutes away, we wouldn't have been able to get there. Um, and did eventually paramedics arrive and, of course, law enforcement? Yeah, paramedics arrived. Um, more police officers came and yeah. Um, did you remain on the scene where you all were found um, until you could be interviewed by law enforcement? Um, yes, that's correct. How long were you there for, do you think? Um, I would say uh, between 30 minutes and like an hour because we had to wait till um, Detective Vanderland showed up. Okay. And then once the lead detective showed up, do you know whether or not you stayed there longer than that? Um. Yeah, well, we had to tell her what happened. Um, Did you have to wait your turn? Yeah, I was separated. Keyshawn told his story or side or whatever, and then I told my what just happened. At any point, did you remove any items from Sebastian's hand? No, I didn't even, I wouldn't have never even had time because the police officer was right um, there within 10 seconds. And as you were shaking Sebastian, um, did you see anything in his hand? No. Did anyone, including yourself, dispose of any firearms? No.
One moment, Judge. All right. I will yield this witness at this time, Judge. All right. Cross examination? Thank you, okay. You may inquire, Mr. Shiner. Yep. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Telling this jury that you called 911 when you left, right? I'm telling this jury that I called 911 when I left. Well, I passed my phone to Keyshawn. He called 911. You didn't call. Keyshawn called. Yeah, he made the call on my phone. Right. And just keep your voice up a little bit, please. I'm having a little trouble hearing you. No problem. No problem. That's after you made the right turn, you said, and you were in a safe area, right? Yes, correct. Way before the car broke down. I mean, way before is is the kind of a stretch. It was only about two, three minutes down the street. A few miles before. It was closer to Travis's house, Travis Rudolph's house, the house where this all happened, than it would be closer to where the car allegedly broke down in West Palm somewhere, right? I don't remember. Huh? <coughs> So you didn't talk to 911 <clears throat> on the way out. You're saying to us that it was Keyshawn, <clears throat> right? Correct. Did you hear what he was saying to the 911 operator? <clears throat> um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but in, in, he said something around Travis just shot somebody. We need an ambulance. And did you call or did Keyshawn call 911 after the car broke down again for a second time? No. No need to, right? Yeah, no need to. Is he on the phone the whole time you guys are trying to drive away with the 911 operator? As soon as you called, did he stay on the phone with the police or the 911 operator? Are you, you're asking too many questions at one time. Could you repeat your question? Did Keyshawn stay on the phone with the 911 operator from the moment he called, like you telling us he called, until the car stopped, until the police got there? I don't believe so. I don't remember 100%, but I think the call was ended before then. Wasn't it true that 911 was never called on the way there, to the, where the, not on the way there, but in where the car got stopped, on the way to where the car got stuck, that you handed Keisha on the phone after the car got stuck, after you had time to do what y'all were going to do? That is so far from the truth. I no, overruled. Go ahead. That is very far from the truth. All right, so let's break it down. You're telling us that well, Keyshawn had to use your phone to call 911 like you testified to, right? Keyshawn didn't have to use my phone. He used my phone because I gave him the phone because I felt like he was more suited to make the phone call and to speak with the police. So that's why I gave him this phone. And he didn't have his phone with him, right? He did not have his phone with him. Put his phone in the trunk, right? His phone was in the trunk. Do you know why? I do not know why. Sebastian's phone was in the trunk, right? Correct. Do you know why his phone was in the trunk? I do not know why. And Tyler Robinson's phone was in the door pocket of the passenger seat, right? I honestly do not know. Okay. You don't, you know where Tyler Robinson's phone was at all during this incident or after the incident? Not really, no. Okay. Well, let's get back to the gas station that you said was abandoned where the car got stuck, right? That's correct. Okay. Do you remember if Keyshawn was still on the phone with the 911 operator telling him where y'all are so the police can find you at that point? It's possible, but I do not remember. Okay. And you're telling us definitively, 100%, that there's no way the first time 911 was called was after the car was inoperable at this gas station or abandoned gas station? Definitively, I don't think so, but I don't, no, I don't think so. We made the phone call in the car while we were driving down the street. Okay, and that would be the prudent thing to do, right, if you could. That would be smart. That was the right thing to do. Sure. That's what we did. All right, and when you get out of the car before the police show up, there was no police there, right? 
right away? It depends on what you mean by right away. Well, within 30 seconds or a minute. Did you see any police officers? Two minutes? Within a minute or two, I did. All right, so you had at least a minute or two before you saw any police cars, right? That's correct. You saw them driving around. They didn't even know where you guys were. It took a while before somebody found you, right? I didn't see. I didn't say I seen any police officers driving around. You didn't see cars, tons of police cars going past you trying to figure out where y'all were? Nope. Okay. And the reason you didn't see all these police cars is because you were trying to hide the weapons you brought to Mr. Rudolph's home. Isn't that true, sir? <laughs> that is so far from the truth. It's loud. So you disagree with that? I completely disagree. Okay. Did you have a phone with you today? I have a phone with me today. In your right pocket, right? Correct. I want to make the witness step down. Sure. You have the mic? Uh... I got it. I don't know whether it is or not, but uh, in any event, I'm going to allow it. Go ahead. Can you face the <clears throat> please? Take your hand out of your pocket if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Where, where's your phone? In your right pocket? Right here. All right. What kind of phone? Talk in the mic if you don't mind. Right, right here. All right, that's your phone in your right pocket? Yes, that's correct. Obviously, it's not the same pants, right? Correct. Okay. And is that the same phone or the same type of phone you had? Back on April 6th or April 7th of 2021. This is, this is the same phone. Exact same phone. The exact same phone. Okay. And the police never took that phone from you. They never took my phone. To this day. To this day. So they never checked it to see if you called 911 or who you texted or who texted you back, right? They never checked my phone. They never asked you for it. Never asked me. To this day. I just said that, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you. Let me get the pointer. You may. That is what I'm telling you. Okay, not a gun. Not a gun. <laughs> you think it's funny? I think you're funny. And I'm not joking around. You must be. All right, well, is it true you put a Keyshawn gun in your pocket before to check it out to see how it fit? That is not true at all. You've never done that? Not that night. Well, previous to that night. Maybe. I've held this gun before. In your pocket to see how it would fit, right? Not that night. Previous night is my question. Okay, yeah, maybe a different night, yeah. Oh. Question. You still maintain that, that what you want. exhibit number three that's been entered into evidence. That's your phone in your pocket. That's what you want everyone to believe, right? That's what it is. It's my okay. phone. Can you explain to the jury why you're standing in the back? Um, somebody had to stand in the back. I just stood in the back just because. So what had to stand in the back because you had to line up to make sure this was going to carry out the way you wanted it, right? No, I just wasn't familiar with the area, and I was just, as you can see, looking around. You saw cameras when you got there, right? I did, actually. I, you can obviously, I appreciate you coming down. Thank you, sir. And when I say cameras, I mean security cameras. On this house you've never been to in your life that you guys all decide to go to for whatever reason you went there. Right? Are you asking me a question? Yeah, you saw the security cameras on the home of where Mr. Rudolph lived, right? Oh, yes. When I walked up to the driveway, I saw the cameras. All right. And you, you didn't know if they were recording or not working, right? No. I have no idea. You didn't want to get in trouble, so you stayed to the back, right? Um... I don't even know how to answer that question. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, you were concerned that you could possibly be caught on camera if you did something improper, right? 
If I was worried about being on camera, when I seen the cameras, I would have just left instantly. Well, you wouldn't leave instantly. You're there to help your brothers no matter what, right? Exactly, but if I was worried about being in trouble, I would have just left. You weren't worried about being in trouble, right? I was worried about Dom, actually, yeah. I was kind of blinded. Kind of blinded. You did things without thinking the way you should, right? Um... Now that the result happened the way it did, yeah, I kind of could say I didn't think. You didn't give a F about what was going on. You were going anyway. Those are your words, right? Um, that's not necessarily true. Well, wasn't it true you told Dr. Hector Vandalin that? You didn't give an F? I don't remember saying that. All right. Well, let me give you a transcription of your statement. I approach the witness. May. And I'm going to refer you page 8, line 14 to 18. Page 8, What? Which? Page 8, sir. Line. 14 to 18, or anything else that helps you in that area? Just read it to yourself, Mr. Lowe. Lines 14 through 18? Yes, sir. Yeah. Page 8? Yes, sir. I'm specifically just... I'm sorry. All right, do you have a chance to read that, Mr. Lowe? Uh, yes. Could okay. you tell me when did I say this or, like, well, who did I hang on, hang okay. on. Wait for the question. Go ahead. You remember speaking to Detective Annalyn when she interviewed you at this abandoned gas station? The day this happened? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You've only given one statement in your whole life to the police officers about this case, right? I'm not sure. I've met a couple times. There's been a lot of, a lot of sit-downs. Okay, so you're telling this jury you gave more than one statement under oath to a police officer in this case? I'm not 100% sure. You only gave one statement that lasted about five or six minutes on the scene. When okay, the yes, ended, yes, right? yes. That was five or six minutes. I don't know how long it was, sir. Overruled. Minutes, right? Overruled. I do not. As long as... The <laughs> well, it doesn't say that, Judge. It says it's negative seven. Uh, then that's a problem. I want you both to compare the transcripts right now and see. Okay, what? Yes. Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen, please. Remember to obey the four cardinal rules. <clears throat> okay, 
Continue. Does that refresh your memory that you told uh, the initial detective that you didn't give an F, you were just on your way? Um, yeah, this happened after everything happened. Um, yes I, or no? Did it refresh your memory? That's my question. All right, yeah. All right, that's what you told the detective. You didn't care. You were going no matter what, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yes, right? Yes. Okay. You're going to handle business with your brothers, right or wrong, and you're taking care of business, right? Wrong. Um, I was just going there to support my friend to make sure he was okay. All right. We'll talk about that. Okay. All right. So let's start from uh, earlier that night. The testimony that... And correct me if I'm wrong, that Tyler called you and you drove to Tyler's home, correct? Correct. With your car? I drove to Tyler's house in my car, correct. What kind of car did you have at the time? Uh, it was a 2012 Honda Accord. Okay. And where did Tyler live generally at that time? Um, where was that? It was off of Belvedere and... Um, I can't even remember the other street. Belvedere and some other place. It was okay. like 10 minutes from my house. All right. And what were you doing when he called you? I just got home. I was in my house doing whatever. Were you with your girlfriend? No. By yourself? I was by myself. All right. And what was your plans that night? Did you have plans? Uh, my, pl my night was actually coming to an end because it was around 11 o'clock. You, why? You worked that day? Worked out? What? What? It's nighttime. That's when the night, the day ends. You're a young guy. You probably go out sometimes, right? Yeah, you could say that. You also used to work at a, a club last time we met as a bouncer, right? I did used to work there at a club at that um, two years ago, a year ago. A bouncer, right? Correct. That means you physically have to remove people and use far force if necessary if they're not behaving properly, right? Correct. You work out, right? Mm, sometimes. You worked out for many years, haven't you, sir? Mm, I wouldn't say that. Not consistently, at least. How tall are you? Uh, about 6'3". Six, 6'3"? Three. Six, three? Yeah, about 6'3". Six, six, uh, and you know how to fight, don't you? I could say I know how to defend myself. You also know how to uh, use offense if you need I'm to. not a trained fighter of, of any sort. The only one who had no idea how to fight that night, in your opinion, is... Daryl Rudolph, right? The brother. Could you repeat your question? The only one who had no clue what they were doing in fighting was the brother, Daryl Rudolph, correct? You're saying they don't they didn't know what they were doing? No, nah, he had no idea how to fight. <laughs> no, nah, it seemed like he knew what he was doing. All right. Well, you don't remember telling me previously on the road that he didn't know how to fight at all? Do you remember that? Um, no, I don't remember that. All right, we'll get to that then. Let me get there. First witness? Yes, you may. Showing you. Oh, I'm going to get in the microphone. Let me just do this. I'm at a motion on November 9th, 2021. Page 77. I'm referring you to page 77, page 77, lines 2 through 5. Is this on the hearing? Do you have that? Yes, I think it's Page 77, lines 2 through 5. All right. You got a chance to read that, sir? Yep. Remember coming uh, to this courthouse and swearing under oath and 
Let's tell the truth. Back on November 9th, 2021. Could you repeat your question? Remember coming to this courthouse. Raise your right hand. Yeah. Today, promise. Tell the whole truth. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And isn't it true you were asked? One second, I lost my place. Page 76. Wait a second. Go back to page 76. I apologize. 76 lines 24 to 25. And then go to 77. Read from lines 1 through 7. All right. Then it's true you were asked on my client's brother. That guy didn't really know how to fight, did he? And you said he was trying to gouge my eyes out. I said, that wasn't my question. He isn't really a fighter. He doesn't know how to fight. Isn't that true, sir? And you said, correct. Remember that? I don't remember it, but it is here. So, yes. Well, that's true. He didn't know how to fight. He was clueless. Right? I wouldn't say clueless, but he's not a professional fighter. So, well, You answered on that day. And there was no jury here that Mr. Rudolph's brother did not know how to fight, correct? That's how you answered that question. I said he was trying to gouge my eyes out. Oh, and then I asked you, he really wasn't a fighter. He didn't know how to fight. Isn't that true, sir? And you said, correct. Wasn't that your answer? Correct, yep. That's my answer. All right. So are you saying now he really knew how to fight? I just don't believe he's clueless, like you said, and when it comes to fighting. Got the word clueless. Isn't it true he doesn't he didn't know how to fight at all? He didn't know how to fight. The brother of my client, Mr. Rudolph. Um, that's an opinion. I could say yes. I say yeah, he knew how to fight. Wow. All right. You want, you want this jury to believe today he knows how to fight, correct? That's what you're saying? Fighting is just fighting. It's not like you gotta be good or bad in a street fight. Wow, well, there are some people that don't have a Prayer if you get into a fist fight with him, right? He's not that guy. You want the jury to believe he knew how to fight? Honestly, they can believe whatever they want. What's your testimony, sir? You're sitting here under oath. What's your testimony? He knew how to defend himself as well. Oh. When he was trying to gouge my eyes out, he knew how to do something. Okay. You never met this man in your life, did you? Correct. What right did you have to get involved in another adult man and adult woman's relationship? What gave you the right to be involved in this? He abused my best friend's sister. So then you become an enforcer when that happens? Um, No, I become a protector and a helper. You protect someone when they're in trouble at that moment, right? Correct. You become a vigilante when you wait a few hours and go with a posse to somebody's house. That's not true. Rephrase, please. I don't agree. Sorry. So you protected Dominique while she's in the comfort of her home where she could call the police or go to the hospital since she's so hurt like you think, right? Could you repeat your question? You're protecting her while she's in the comfort of her home or wherever she is. She's not with you guys, right? Well, it's sort of a question. She's not with you. She was not with us, correct. All right, and she's not with Mr. Rudolph as far as you know, right? Correct. She's not being held hostage. Correct. She's not being trapped anywhere where she can't get out, right? Correct. First of all, you don't even know what happened that night personally, do you? I know what happened. I just didn't see it. You were not there, so you don't know who's telling the truth, not telling the truth, if it was real or not real. You don't know, do you? It turned out to be the truth, so I did know. Okay, so even if it was real, you have a right to be her protector when she's in her house, fully protected, right? Correct. 
Why don't you call 911 to protect them? Put this guy in jail if he's doing these things that you think are really true that happened. Why don't you do that? Um, that's not how I decided to handle the situation, and it wasn't my situation, so. You made it your situation. You just said you're her protector. Um, made it is not the word I would use. All right, so how are you going to protect her by going over another grown man's house at midnight and park a block and a half away? How are you going to protect her at that moment, sir? Uh, it wasn't necessarily protecting her in that situation. It was more like defending her honor. Okay. So it's not protecting now. Now it's about chivalry, her honor? Is that what you're telling us? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what gave you the right to do that? I don't know. My mind. I woke up and I wanted to do it. You would do it again, wouldn't you? No, I won't, actually. I really won't. You had no idea that Keyshawn was sending messages to Tyler and his sister that Travis is a dead man walking. You didn't even know that when you got there, right? Correct. That was the biggest surprise of everything that you found out later on, right? Correct. You didn't know that this young lady that you're protecting her honor told her brother and Tyler Robinson, or maybe you did know, tell me if you knew that she told her brother, Keyshawn, and Tyler Robinson to go shoot his shit up. Did you know she made that statement? No, I did not. You didn't go to protect their honor. You were part of a guy, group of guys who were going to put a hit on somebody, right? Sustained. You were going to go kill my client with your friends, weren't you, sir? That is so far from the truth. You're going to beat him to a pulp or shoot him if you can get away with it, right? That is so far from the truth. Well, how do you protect somebody's honor, in your words, with four guys at 12 o'clock? My words were defend her honor. Sorry? My words were defend her honor, not protect them. Well, your words now. Why didn't you use your words over the telephone? Call Mr. Rudolph if you wanted to use your words. I don't have his phone number. You ask uh, your dear friend, Dominique, who you're protecting her honor for his phone number? No. Why not? You, you use words over a phone, can't you? Um, this wasn't a talk over the phone matter. You can use social media if you want to use words, right? I don't have social media. Well, you could borrow one of your friend's phone if it was so important to use words to try to rectify her honor, correct? This wasn't an over-the-phone matter. All right, this was an in-person matter to defend her honor. Those, those are your words, right? Correct. All right, tell the jury how you're defending her honor. By showing up to her abuser's house and asking him questions. Okay. What gave you the right to do that? Are you, are you a counselor, a marriage counselor? Sustained. Are you a marriage counselor? Am I a marriage counselor? Yes, sir. No, not legally, no. How about illegally? Or on the side? <laughs> no, I, no. Have you ever done this before and go to another man's house to ask what happened with your relationship and why you did so-and-so, did you? No. Nobody forced you to drive over to Tyler's house, did they? Mm, correct. So after this was all over and you took an Uber, you took an Uber with Keyshawn, right? Yeah, the police department called an Uber. All right, and you, and you took it back to your house? Um, no, we went back to Tyler's house to get my car. Of course, that's where it was, right? Correct. It wasn't at your house. It was not at my house. Keyshawn was with you when you went back to Tyler's home to get the your Correct. car, right? Correct. You knew my client had guns, right? I did not know he had a, a gun with 100 rounds in it waiting to kill somebody, no. I knew he had a, a pistol or something. Right, so you want this jury to believe that he was waiting to kill somebody, right? That's what you just said. That's why you, you buy a gun to defend yourself. So, he, so, so people who have guns are waiting to kill somebody? To defend themselves. You just said he had that gun with 100 rounds so he can kill somebody, right? If he felt like he had to use it, that's what he had it for. He didn't come out the door shooting at you guys when you were there, right? He did not know. He 
didn't come out when he came out with a gun. He didn't shoot at anyone, did he, sir? I mean, somebody died to his shooting, so he did come outside with a gun and shoot somebody. As soon as he came out with a gun, and you said you were in that video, and Tyler, and my client's mom, he didn't come out shooting anyone, did he, sir? He was too busy slipping on the pavement to shoot anybody, and by the time he was able to do that, I was in the car. Okay, so my question is, he did not shoot anyone at that point, did he, sir? No, but just give him 30 seconds. All right, you want to keep adding so you can try to convince the jury some, but why don't you just answer the question? Sustained. Do you understand my questions? No, can you ask it again? If you don't understand, please, I'll repeat it. Okay? Go ahead. I'm not asking about 30 seconds later. A lot can happen in 30 seconds. Objection to Sustained. Master What's the you? question? <clears throat> What's the question? He comes out of the house with the gun. You saw him, right? You saw Mr. Rudolph come out with the gun, right? Nope. I just see him slip if he didn't see him come out with the gun. You guys just showed me a video. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're telling us what you saw now. Exactly. I want to make sure you talk about what you saw at the time. Okay. You didn't hear any gunshots go off at all while you were running to the car, did you? Correct. You didn't see Tyler get shot when Mr. Rudolph came outside and came very close to him, and Tyler, as you discussed, said, you got this, and you said that means he gave up, right? Correct. My client didn't shoot him then, did he? He did not, no. Could have if he wanted to, right? He could have. Sure. Could have shot at you running to your car, right? He could have. But he didn't do that, did he? No, and I know why, but I can't say it. He didn't but shoot at Keyshawn, did he? No, well, no, not yet. Yeah. He didn't shoot at your friend Sebastian, who's fighting with his brother. His own brother, Travis Rudolph's brother. The only person he could have shot at in front of his house was Tyler because me, Keyshawn, and Sebastian already were at the car. That's not true. That is true. <laughs> you told us a few minutes ago, and we'll get into this if you, if, if Go you ahead. refresh your memory. You told us early that Sebastian was fighting with Daryl Rudolph or DJ or the brother, whatever you want to call him. Okay, and, and at that time, your client was going back into his house to get the gun. Okay, so let, let's take this slowly <clears throat> so we don't get the times confused. You didn't hear any gunshots go off while Sebastian was fighting with DJ or Daryl. You know who DJ or Daryl is, right? Yeah, I don't care about him. All right, well, I'm asking you to care. I'm asking if you know who he is. All right. Okay. You get to the car with your friend Keyshawn, right? Correct, and Sebastian. All right, now you're saying Sebastian was there at the car? Not He was not fighting with, with DJ at that point? I said get into the car. That's what you said, get into the car. Me and Keyshawn didn't get in the car. We just walked to the car. When you or, get to the car, isn't it true you saw Sebastian fighting with DJ? Correct. And not only did you see him fighting with, with DJ, and then you showed in the chart to the prosecutor where you think it was, right? Correct. All right. You went to go help him, right? Correct. You didn't get in the car, did you? Nope. You could have. I could have, yes. You were shooting at, you were threatening you at this point, right? Correct. You could have walked away. You could have walked down the block, couldn't you? I guess, yeah, you can say that. That defeats the whole purpose of showing up to walk away after everything already happened, but. You could have walked away. Nobody stopped you, right? I had that option of doing that. He also had the option of not going to my client's home or going to the door and standing where you stood, right? And he also had the option of not putting his hands on Dominique, so correct. All right, so I'm not asking you what my client's options. I'm asking about your options. Correct. Okay, next question. So your other option would be walk away, get in the car, call <laughs> the police, right? You could do that. You had your phone, right? Um, I wasn't going to call the police uh, if, if it was just a fight. Yeah, because you knew you were in the wrong for going to his house at night and doing what y'all were going to do, right? No, I just don't wouldn't have believed that the police needed to be involved in just a fight situation. Murder right, is different. So calling the police was not an option since her honor was destroyed and she was beaten up like you were told. 
And everything that happened at the yeah, front of the house, right? Well, the, the, the real problem is it's a multi-pronged question. Next question. All right, so under no circumstances were you going to call the police, right? Before the situation, under no circumstances were I going to call the police, correct? I'm talking during the situation, when you got back to the car, before anything happened, while Sebastian was fighting with DJ and Mr. Rudolph went in the house to get his gun, as you now know. You didn't call the police, did you? You said under no circumstances, um, the circumstance of him killing somebody, yeah, I would call the police, but... It's it, before this all happened, when okay. you got to your car, your life wasn't in danger when you got to the car, was it? Um, I didn't know that, and what I thought it wasn't, but it actually was. So much in danger. Tell us why you went to go sucker punch DJ to make sure you could, guys could beat him up and get your final licks in him. So all four of us can go home? Okay. You were not in fear of getting shot when you went to go help Sebastian beat up Mr. Rudolph, were you? And I'm not talking to Travis. I'm talking his brother. I didn't see a gun to me for me to be Im immediately scared f to not help Sebastian you went to went over there to do that right I went what you went to went over there to help Sebastian beat up DJ if you saw Mr. Rudolph with the gun at that moment would you sir I don't know that's not how the situation happened all right but you definitely did not see a gun at the moment you were trying to help your friend your brother Sebastian beat up this man whether he knew how to fight or not you you still went over to help him right Objection. Oh, overruled. Go ahead. Beating up the guy that you told us back in November didn't happen. <coughs> Today you said maybe he did. <coughs> you went over to help. Beat that guy up, right? Correct. Why would you have to do that if it was over and you were trying to get away? Tell the jury why you had to do that. Because it's it was, but last time. Go ahead. Answer the question, please. Could you repeat your question? Why? Well, first of all, was Sebastian losing? I don't remember specifically. No, he wasn't. Nobody was getting knocked out or it wasn't like a blow for blow fight. Like, it was just two people just kind of squaring up with each other. So, why did you have to go over there and try to knock him out by sucker punching him in the head or face? Because Keyshawn was getting the car ready. And while he was doing that, Tyler and Sebastian were not at the car yet. So, I went to help him. To get the last licks in or do something to Mr. Rudolph's brother, right? To help Sebastian. He didn't need your help, did he? Two is better than one. You weren't going to give anyone a fair fight that night, were you? I didn't go there to fight. Well, but that's what y'all did. Because of your client. Okay. Not because of anything you did is what you're telling us. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Okay. Your friend... Your friends all had guns with them, didn't they, sir? No. Yeah, well. <clears throat> may I approach the witness? You may. Make sure you use the microphone. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, I'm, I'm going to show you a defense already entered into evidence, defense exhibit number three. <clears throat> See your friend Sebastian here? Yeah. Speak in the mic if you don't mind, thank you. Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. You already said his cell phone was in the car, right? I actually don't know if his phone was in the car, but... You just testified to that earlier. Why'd you say that? Correct, go ahead. Well, why'd you say it then? You asked me if Sebastian's car was, the phone was in the trunk after you asked asking Keyshawn's phone was in the trunk. I just said yes, because I didn't know for sure. Well, why are you guessing? You know this is important. Correct. He had his phone in the trunk, and go ahead and say what you got to say. So you agree his phone was in the trunk, or are you taking that I back? Career, I, I agree. His phone was in the trunk. Okay. You don't know what's in Sebastian's pocket, do you? Um, Not necessarily 100%. All right. Well... Did you search Sebastian's pockets?
Did you search him? Did I search him? Oh, no. I did not search him. He's a grown man. <laughs> You know what was in his pockets when the police and the medical examiners got there? What? Oh, I'm asking if you know. Oh, no, I don't. You know there wasn't a gun in his pocket, right? I 100% know that. Yeah, you guys tossed the gun when you got to the gas station or on the way there, right? So where's the gun? Good question. Where is it? You tell me. You know the situation better than me. You were there. Seems like it. So when you guys leave, you never gave Keyshawn the phone until after you're in the gas station because you have to figure out what to do with the gun that your friend Sebastian had in his hand, correct? That is so far from the truth. Okay. Would you be surprised to learn that the police were not called until after y'all had the car stopped? That would be surprising information. Yeah. Kind of wouldn't make sense, right? Correct. So let me get this straight. So you're waiting at the gas station. You don't really get interviewed by any of the police officers, right? Wrong. Until Detective Vandalin shows up. Oh, interviewed? Yeah. Okay, interviewed, right, correct. All right, maybe they asked you where you were, how this happened, who did it. Maybe those little questions by the police officers, right? I don't remember. All right, but the first time you got interviewed, and the only time you got interviewed, was by Detective Vandalin, correct? Um, I don't know how to answer that because I've had multiple things where I had to come in and ask questions. So, Talk by the police. Okay, correct. Go ahead. Okay, and Detective Vandalin never came back another day to follow up with you to ask you any more questions other than the whatever she asked you at the scene, right, where the gas station was. I don't 100% remember, I'm just be honest. So maybe she did, maybe she didn't, you don't know. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Do you know anything about your phone being able to tell exactly where you are? Are you asking me? Yeah, do you know anything about that, where they can... Like location services and stuff? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. You know about call logs? Call logs, correct, yep. Text messages? Yep. Instagram messages, do you ever use those? Um, I don't have social media. All right, so there's no way Dominique could ever call you or your friends call you through Instagram? Correct. How about WhatsApp? As of right now, yes, but at that time, no. Okay. <clears throat> Did any of the officers at the scene ask you for your phone? No. And Detective Vandalin never asked to look at your phone or gather it either? Correct. Okay. You still have the same phone or a different phone? That's literally the same. Okay. Next question, please. When you got to Tyler's house, you said there was Tyler was there, Tyler Robinson. Is he still <laughs> your buddy? Correct. Best friend? Correct. You guys are still tight, all of you. Yep. Okay, that's a yes, right? Yes, sir. And you said somebody by the name of Tyrone, Tyler's brother, was there? At Tyler's house? Yes, sir. Correct. Is he a grown man? Is he a grown man? Yes, yeah, he's a grown man. Okay. Any reason why he came or, or didn't come with you guys? Uh, I said before, he was hanging out with his own friend, his own business. Did he know or have any idea? Did you guys share with him what was going on? Um... I don't know, 100%. You were there. Did anyone talk to him about This was two years ago. I don't remember that. Okay. I almost died. Did the police ask you about this gentleman named Tyrone? No. And what was Tyrone's friend's name? I think his name is Nick. All right, nothing else you know about him? Nope. Police have asked you about anyone who was at Tyler's house that night beside you? Um, you said the police never asked me? Did they ever ask you about who else was there? Um, I guess, yeah, they just asked me who was there and just said the same thing. Right. 
Is it your testimony when you got to Mr. Robinson's house and all the guys were there, there was no discussion about a firearm? Could you repeat your question? Sure. You're at Mr. Robinson's home. Mm -hmm. Would you agree there was no discussion about a firearm with, between all of you, <coughs> friend, all of your friends and you? Um, I would disagree. Okay. You still have the, the big booklet there from yep. Rania? From November 9th, 2021. Go to page 12, line 15 through 17, please. 15 through 17. November 9th. Yeah. 12. 15 to 17. You get a chance to read that, sir? Yes, sir. And November 9th, like we talked about, you were under oath, right? Correct. Isn't it true, you were asked, okay, when you were at Mr. Robinson's home, was there a discussion to your knowledge about firearms? And your answer was no. Isn't that what I just said? Did you read it? No, I know that, but your question before this, I said I disagree. Said, did I agree? All right, let, let's get this straight. You, would you agree that none of you guys talked about a gun at Mr. Robinson's home? There was no discussions about a firearm while you were at his home. Correct, correct. Okay, so you agree with that? Yes. Okay. When you, when you get to the house, Mr. Rudolph's house, did you GPS it on your phone? No. You know who did? More than likely, Keyshawn. You guess it or you don't know? I don't know. Okay, did anyone GPS it? I just said I don't know. <laughs> you don't know, that's okay. I don't know. All right. Did you, did you pass the house, Mr. Rudolph's front door, before you parked the car? I didn't know what his house looked like. All right, well, you do now. You know now, right? I do know now, yes. All right, so isn't it true you passed the front of his house before y'all parked? I don't remember. You can't remember that. I don't remember. That's something so small out of that whole night. Well, it's not small if you're casing a place and looking for cameras or looking how to do something. So if you don't remember. Sustained. Isn't it true you guys passed the house and were looking for <clears> cameras <throat> or seeing if there was anyone outside and where you should park? Um, that's true. Okay. And why would you do that if you're just there to have a conversation about somebody's honor? Why would you do that? I mean, everybody looks at any situation before you do anything. So I think that's a normal thing to do. So how about when you came into this courthouse today? Were you trying to check where all the cameras are? Um, if they're visibly right in front of my face, I'm going to make a mental note that it's right in front of my face. Yeah, but you're not looking around. You, you, you can't tell me how many cameras are in this courtroom, can you? I see at least two. But I know That's not like, something you look at every day, is it? No, I'm not in the courtroom every day. I'm talking on the street. You don't look for cameras in, when you go to your friend's house or a neighbor's house, do you? Objection. Overruled. I, overruled. Go ahead. Like I said, if I see it, then I take a mental note. I don't look for it. All right. Well, you knew there was going to be trouble that night. That's why it was important to figure this out, where to park, where the cameras are. Right? You knew it. I wasn't looking for any cameras, and I knew it wasn't the best situation to be in. But I wasn't looking for no cameras. You just said you all drove by the house and looked for cameras and tried to figure out where to park. Remember? I did just say that, but I don't really remember doing all that. So you, that's a guess, or you're making that up? Um, no, it's not a guess. We had to drive by it. I don't really remember doing it, but I'm assuming that they parked the way they did for a reason, or Keyshawn parked the way he did for a reason. You had to drive by Mr. Rudolph's home, correct? Um, I don't remember. I, I, I just told you, I don't remember. Why do you keep saying things? Now you're telling me, now you don't remember what you just said. I don't remember driving past his house. I remember parking in a certain way. That's what I said. Isn't it true there was parking in front of the house where Mr. Rudolph lived? 
Could you repeat your question? Isn't it true there was park, plenty of parking in front of the house where Mr. Rudolph lived? The front door, there's parking adjacent to the front door right on the street. You could say that, yes. I don't want to say that. You tell me. You were there. I mean, yeah. Is that a yes? Yeah. You have to say yes. You yes, have, yes, yes. Maybe misinterpreted if it's... Sorry, right. yes, yes. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it true there's parking directly across the street from his house when you got there? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You don't care either, do you? Not really. Didn't make a difference to you. Not really, no. How about when you when you turn the corner? Remember, remember, remember your brother uh, Keyshawn making a U-turn to park the car. Um, I don't remember. If you know, why did y'all get out of the car and then he moved it again? Do you know? I don't remember getting out of the car and moving it again. I'm not saying you did. I'm talking Keyshawn. No, I don't know because I, I don't even think that happened. Okay. Well, isn't it true when you got out of the car, you and your friends were looking for cameras to see if any neighbors may catch what was going on? That is very false. Okay, and you don't even believe he moved the car a second time. After he parks and you get out, you don't believe he moved up a little bit, right? I don't remember, and I'm just going to say I agree. I agree, correct. I don't you agree with me. If you don't remember, that's fine. I don't believe he moved the car a second time. Okay. So, correct. Okay. <clears throat> Would you agree that the knocking on the door was very loud? <clears throat> Um, the front door of Mr. Rudolph's home. That's a opinion. I could say he knocked normally. I'm asking what your opinion is. You were there, not me. He knocked normally. All right, so it wasn't a loud bang. It wasn't a low bang. It was a normal bang. Normal knocking. Normal knocking. Thank you. Was there a bell at the house? I do not remember. Remember a doorbell cam that we saw pictures on? Yep, I remember that. Oh, there's a bell on that doorbell cam, or you don't know that? Um, I wasn't. I was in the back. So I wasn't really looking right. at that. <clears throat> and then you see a, a, a gentleman come out of the house who you never met in your life, right? Correct. You don't leave at this point. Correct. How come? Why would I? You didn't know my client lived with anyone, did you? I didn't even know what he looked like. He could have. That could have been him. Oh. You thought he lived by himself, isn't that true? I did not think that. I didn't know where he lived with, who he lived with. Right. So somebody told you he lived with his mom and his, his brother, or you didn't know that? I did not know he stayed with his mother. How about his brother? I did not know he stayed with his brother. So you were surprised when the brother opened the door, right? Or you didn't know if that was Travis or the brother at that point? I wasn't surprised, but I didn't know who, who that was. Oh. And no one attacked the brother, right? At first, when he came out, nobody beat him up or hurt him, right? Correct. Why were you, why were you cognizant or, or why were you aware there was cameras facing you? Um, it's pretty obvious. You're walking up a driveway, you see a camera pointing directly at you. So. See multiple ones? I just remember at least one. One from the front door facing out? Um... I don't remember exactly where it was at, but I remember making a mental note about it. It was obvious it was there, right? Yep. Remember the ones in the side of the house facing out too, or you don't remember those? No. You're not saying they weren't there, you just didn't see them? Correct. Okay. And then after you find out it's not Travis because your friends or your brothers are asking this man, where's your brother at or where's Travis at, right? Correct. Right? And then you said the mom came out next? Correct. And you knew she was the mom because she was obviously the right age to be a mother? Objection, Judge. Call for speculation. Overruled. Like, how'd you know it was the mom? Lucky guess. Okay, it wasn't that hard to figure that out, right? Yeah. And when the mom comes out, you still don't leave, do you? No. She starts yelling at you guys, saying, look, this is on my camera. Check this out. Objection, right? 
sustained. Wrong. Well, isn't it true the mom came outside and starts showing you her phone? I disagree with that statement. Okay. Isn't it true the mom started yelling and telling you all she has everything on camera, we don't want no problems, you all need to leave? Something to that, no, maybe not the exact words, but something to that effect. Isn't that true, sir? I don't remember that, honestly. So the mom came out and didn't say a word is your testimony, or what's your testimony about what the mom said? I don't. She may have said words, but I don't remember what she said. Weren't paying attention to her? Um, just so much more happened throughout that night that that's very minimal to me. Okay. You didn't care if his mom was there, did you? Nope. Because you were going to take care of business, right? I'm going to keep saying my words and defend um, Dom's honor, Dominique. Okay. Why don't you wait till daylight when maybe it would be a little safer for everybody? Any reason why you didn't do that? Um, this wasn't uh, my plan or anything like that. Um, I just ha got a phone call and I just went along with everything that was happening. But it said no, right? I had the option to say no. There's no way you would do that, right? Um, under different circumstances, if it's, I don't know. For that situation, that exact situation, there was no way I was saying no. You would agree it was kind of a long fight, right? Um, I don't know what a long fight is. Those are your words previously. You want me to show you where you said them? Yes, yeah, please. Okay. Same statement. Go to page 24, line 20 to 25, please. What, what lines? 20 to 25. Okay, so if you're considering five minutes long for a fight, then, yeah, I would say that's a long fight. That's what I said, five minutes. All right. Isn't it true when you were asked the question, this physical fight that's occurring, are you staying in one spot? Are you moving around? Describe for the court. And your words are, it was kind, I would say, a long fight. Or I would say probably like five minutes. So we started off the driveway, and then you, you keep going on. We ended up in the road, and yeah, it was all over the place, so it wasn't in one spot. Those are your words, long fight, right? You said that. Okay. True? I, I did. Say five minutes as long as you did. Okay, yeah. I didn't need to ask I, you. I thought you... Let me finish my question. The question wasn't whether it was a long fight. Well, I asked if it was saying in one spot was the question, the fight. And you said it was a long fight, five minutes. So you said long fight, right? Objection, counsel didn't ask the question. Well, what's, whichever lawyer asked you, I'm sorry, maybe the state asked you that question. Sorry. Remember saying long fight, your words? Correct. Okay. Now you want us to believe it was a short, a short fight, right? Well, the word long is subjective, so. Okay. So do you agree now or disagree that it was a long fight? Um, I guess I agree because I said it. <clears throat> fight ended up, started at the front door, right? Uh, front, in front of the, like, garage area, or, like, the front driveway. Okay, well, it was right on the front the patio as soon as the door opens up, right? Wrong. It wasn't directly in front of the door. It was... Um, the driveway area is where it started? Yeah, at the end of his drive. Well. And you're, you're saying that Mr. Rudolph attacked your brother, Keyshawn, right? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> For no reason. Correct. Okay. And that's how the fight started, according to you. Correct? Yep, correct. Okay.
been to gun shows before, right? Like a viewing of um, gun? Is that what you're saying? You know what a gun show is? It depends on what you mean, like people selling guns? Selling them, displaying them. Yes, correct. things about guns, buying, selling, doing all kinds of things. Correct. Hundreds and hundreds of vendors in the South Florida Fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah, correct. You know what I'm talking about. I just wanted you to be specific. No problem. You've been to gun shows before, right? Correct. You have interest in guns, don't you, sir? At the time of the incident, I had no interest of guns. Um, after the incident, I uh, gained an interest for interest for guns. Well, you went to the gun shows before the incident happened. Isn't that true? Have I ever been to a gun show before that happened? Yes. Did I have a gun? No. And you had Keyshawn's gun be in your pocket, not the day this happened, according to you, but before that you put the gun in the pocket, right? Correct. Not this day, but when he got it. Do you agree or disagree that Dominique Jones' relationship with Mr. Travis Rudolph is none of your business? It is, but I'll allow it, <clears throat> and then we're going to move on to something else. All right, thank you. Would you agree with that, sir? Would I agree that um, their situation has nothing to do with me? Um, their on- relationship or problems has nothing to do with you. <clears throat> Uh, only up until the point when somebody begins to put their hands on somebody, if it has something to do with Keyshawn, then it has something to do with me, so. Was she injured, Dominique? Um, I'm not 100% sure. You saw her when it happened, after it happened, right? Um, later that night. You see absolutely no injuries on her at all, did you, sir? I did not see it, no. You would agree. I mean, obviously, people wear hoodies for different reasons. Usually, it's cold or it's just a habit, right? Right? Correct. You would agree that your friend Keyshawn, who you know very well, puts his hoodie up when he starts getting mad or angry, right? Correct. Okay. Police never took any photographs of you after this altercation when you were at the gas station, did they? Uh, no, they did not. You had no injuries at all, right? I had a, a cut on my face, going down my face, from um, his brother trying to scrape my eyes out. All right, so you point into your right eye, right? Correct. And how long or where was the scrape exactly? So It was from the corner of my eye down to like right here. It was just a cut. It wasn't nothing too crazy though. Pointing from the bridge of your nose on your right eye coming down. They're around my the, cheekbone your, area. How many inches would you say? I would say like three, maybe two or three. Clearly visible, right? Clearly visible. You'd have to be almost blind not to see it if I was someone standing next to you, right? Correct. Did you show that to the police? Did I show it to them? Yeah. No, because it was nighttime and I wasn't. I didn't even know I had it till the next day. So was it visible that night, or it didn't come out until the next day? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have a mirror after SB died. I saw it when I woke up the next morning. The police had lots of flashlights out there, didn't they? I'm sure they did, but I didn't know I had it on my face. All right. Did the detective ever say, "Hey, can I get a picture of that"? Um, no, they didn't. And when you saw it the next day, did you bother calling the police and saying, hey, check this out, this just came out, this is what happened to me? Um, no, I did not. Um. Because I was devastated by the death that happened the day before. But when you're at the hospital, you're, you went to the hospital, right? Correct. Any police officers there, right? Correct. Tell any of them. I was still devastated and not worried about a cut on my face. Okay. When Mr. Rudolph comes out of the home with the firearm, now you see him with the gun, right? Wrong. I never saw him with a gun. 
Okay, so it's your testimony. You stopped beating up my client's brother, Daryl or DJ. Why? Because I wanted to leave. And if you wanted to leave, why did you go over and give him a sucker punch? Because not everybody was at the car and I was helping Sebastian. Okay, so you didn't see Mr. Rudolph come out of the house with the gun is what you're telling us. Correct. All right, let me, uh, same, same statement, page 88, line 6 through 9. Read that to yourself, please. Page 88. Yes, sir. 88, line 6 through 9. Statement from November 9th, 2021. Finish? Yep. And it's true when you were asked by whatever lawyer, so after you, and so after you sucker punched this guy, why did you stop? And your answer was because I knew he was going in his house to get a gun. Isn't, isn't that true what you said? Correct. Right. So you knew he was getting a gun. That's sustained. Those are two completely different questions. You said that I see him with the gun. All right, stop. Wait for the next question. You're right about that, and I'll, and I'll correct that. So you stopped fighting because you knew he was just about to come out with a gun. Exactly. Okay. And you knew after what just happened, it's going to get dangerous because y'all went there with guns, and you somebody threatened. Well, let me ask you this. Did you see Tyler point a gun during the fight against Mr. Rudolph, the Travis Rudolph, the gentleman here today, did you see Tyler point a gun at him during this fight? No, I never saw that. Were you in the fight with Mr. Rudolph exclusively, or were you back and forth fighting both the brothers? Um, it was back and forth fighting both. Would you agree that it was two-on-one or three-on-one at any given time during the main fight when it first started? Um, I would disagree. I believe it was two on one the entire time. Okay. And when you get back to the Cadillac, you never saw Tyler in the Cadillac before you left. Isn't that true, sir? Correct. And Tyler could have been standing outside the car pointing a gun at the Rudolph brothers. And you don't know if he did or didn't because you couldn't see what he was doing, right? He could have done that. I did not see. I wasn't there. You would, you would duck down. I was in the car getting shot at, yes. You would duck down, right? Right. So you don't know what your brother Tyler was doing. You don't even know if the door was open or closed, do you? The back door, you jumped in. You don't even know if that was open or closed, right? Right. So if Tyler was standing behind the back door, pointing a gun at the Rudolph brothers, you don't know if he was or wasn't. You couldn't see. Correct. All right, we're going to take a break here for just a moment. <clears throat> Let's see, that would be Mr. Colon. Um, come on up, sir. Don't be afraid, just come on up. There's nothing, nothing to be afraid about. Come on. Mr. Colon? That was a personal message for Mr. Colon unrelated to this trial. <clears throat> All right. Um, continue with cross-examination. Uh, actually, on your way up, uh, let me speak with both sides, please, real quickly.
Yes. When you got down in the car, you never saw Mr. Rudolph shooting anything, did you? You just heard the shots. Never seen him. Then you went straight down. I went straight down. You were pushed by Tyler. I don't know exactly, but I would say correct. Well, you said that earlier, right? Correct. All right. And when Tyler pushed you, that's before the gunshots even went off, right? Correct. Um, his, he said in his mind, yes, sir. his mind was to get into the car. He never got in the car, did he? Um, I'm not Tyler, so I don't know. You couldn't see the shot in front of you, could you, at the moment or a few moments before the shooting started? Because you were pushed down, right? I couldn't see Keyshawn? Yes, sir. Not, he, right. Yeah, correct. I couldn't see him. I, All right, and you, and you couldn't see Sebastian either, right? You're talking about during the shooting, right? No, I'm talking before the shooting. Moments before, when you got pushed down, before the shooting starts, you couldn't see what Sebastian was doing other than he was in front of you, correct? Correct. Okay. All you could see is Sebastian's here, right? I couldn't see anything. So you can tell this jury what Sebastian was or was not doing at the moment the shots rang out. Could you, sir? He was sitting in his chair. Other than that, you can't say what he was doing because you couldn't see what what he was doing at all. I cannot speak for anybody at that time, no, Kurt. Okay. Your testimony, you and your friend, your buddy, uh, best friend, Keyshawn, sorry, uh, flagged the police down. Where are we jumping from the shooting to the, yes, okay, so we're jumping only, off. Only one place you guys flagged the police down, right? I know, I'm just saying you're all over the place, so I just want to be clear. Yeah, I'm at the gas station. Okay, now we're there, okay. Um, I jumped out and I flagged down the police officer. Isn't it true? Both of you flagged down the police officer, according to you. Um, I don't remember if I said that, but I know that I was the one who did it. Page 95, line 3 to 11, please. See if that refreshes your memory. 95, what lines? 3 through 11. Okay, yes. All right, so both of you guys flagged them down, right? Flagged the police down. Correct. And how do you flag the police down? You you jumping up and down with your hands waving? Basically, yes. All right. And before the police got there, you both were out of your car, right? Um, I don't remember where Keyshawn was at specifically, but I know I was outside of the car. Okay. Did the police ever ask you where you went before they showed up in terms of the gas station? No. I'm wrapping it up, Judge. All righty. A couple more minutes. Okay. Thank you. You didn't know that your good friend Dominique, well, your best friend's sister, was married, did you? No. At the time, she was in a relationship with Mr. Rudolph. No. You didn't discuss those kind of things with her, right? Correct. You know how she even met Mr. Rudolph, Dominique? I have no idea. You've never been involved in anything in their relationship other than this night when Keyshawn unfortunately got shot, right? When Keyshawn what? Unfortunately shot. 
Bichon was shot? No. Sebastian, I apologize. Okay. Um, before this night, I had nothing to do with anything between her relationships. So, correct. Do you know that they were on the rocks for about a month? Well, you don't know that, do you? No. Okay. Beside Tyler calling you, who else called you or texted you or instant messaged you or whatever words you want to use communicated by your cell phone before you that night? Anyone else? Besides call, like, before everything happened? Or, yes, sir. Let's start with before. Um, no, there's no one who, who called me besides Tyler. Okay. <clears throat> And no one texted you, instant messaged you, FaceTimed you, whatever words you want to use? Nobody. How about right after? After everything happened? Yes, sir. After the police let you go and you went back to Tyler's house to get your car, sir. <clears throat> Receive any calls? Text messages, instant messages, FaceTime? No. Instagram? No. From nobody? No. Nobody. The whole night? The whole morning. I don't remember if anybody called my phone specifically, but I know Keyshawn was getting calls. And did he have a new phone at that point? If you know. He didn't have his phone. So maybe they were calling my phone for him because he didn't have his phone with him. And so we probably spoke to... Uh, if you remember, if you don't remember, that's okay. All right, I don't remember. Okay. Why didn't you want Keyshawn to go with you and Tyler and Sebastian over to Travis Rudolph's home? Why did I want them to come? Why did you not want Keyshawn to go with you to Ty to Travis Rudolph's home? Did I say I, I didn't? Could you repeat your question? Yeah. Did you want, let me ask you another way. Did you want, before you went to Mr. Rudolph's home, did you want or did you not want Keyshawn to go with you? I, it was his situation. I was going if he was going. If he wasn't going, then, then I wasn't going. Isn't it true, you, and I'll show you this, you previously said you didn't want him to go with you. Show me. You remember? Yep, I don't. Right, let me hand you a sworn deposition. You remember coming to give a deposition? Let me, let me go on the mic. Let me hand you this. Sorry, it's coming out, but everything's there. Remember giving a, a deposition, a sworn statement? Yes. On July 27th, 2021. Correct. And those prosecutors there? Correct. Me? Remember that? Yeah. Ms. Perlette, is that a yes? Yeah. Ms. Perlette? Who? Ms. Perlette, this other lawyer? Uh, I don't I don't know. Remember a court report? You remember a lady typing everything down that we were all saying? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, so you're giving a statement under oath. What's the all right, so you gave a sworn statement under oath, right? Correct. All right, if you can go to page 49, line 5 through 9. What was the lines? 5 through 9. You just misphrased me so bad. Okay. Okay. So you take that a different way. No, right? Ask your question again. All right. Same question, because you just said something completely different. Yeah, 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 you know what? I take that back. You're correct. I know. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> you say anything. Yeah, you, you didn't want it to go over there by himself is what you said. Exactly. So oh, okay, because take cause, your book cause he, has, he has a career, right? The future, yeah. Future. Yeah. Smartest guy you know. 
Exactly. Why would you be worried about his career or future under these circumstances? Why? Why would I be worried about his future or career? Yeah, before any of this happened, why would you not want him to go by himself and worry about it? Since he's the smartest guy you know, he has a great career ahead of him, promising career in your mind, why would you not want him to go by himself? Because Keyshawn is in school, medical school to be exact. Um, that's a very intense um, degree to get. Um, he shouldn't have to have distractions like this in his life when he's trying to be much greater than something like this. That's why I was ready for his future. You knew something that was about to go down, right? No, but I could say I know it's not the best situation to be in. Okay. Your job to protect Keyshawn, right? I'm not going to say it's my job, but I'll definitely step in if I can. You weren't going to let this slide, right? What do you mean? What happened, allegedly happened to Miss Jones, Dominique Jones. You weren't going to let that slide, right? <laughs> um, correct, I guess. Mm -hmm. Calling the police, you don't, that's not how you operate. There was no chance you were calling the police to report what happened to Dominique, right? Correct. You don't think what you all did was wrong, correct? Correct. And you still don't. Um, if it wasn't for the result of what happened, then I would believe that we were doing nothing wrong. You have TikTok? Back in the day when this happened? TikTok? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I don't know. I believe so. Why are you smiling? Is that funny, TikTok? That's a crazy question to ask. Okay. Isn't it true you sent a TikTok video by text to Tyler and Keyshawn on 10.26 p.m., the day of the before your good friend passed away? I don't remember. And then true at 1033, you FaceTimed. Sure. Once again, feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen, remembering and obeying the cardinal rules. Big time.
I proceed? Yes, please. Around, around 10.30 that night, the night before, on the 6th, before the shooting happened, remember Tyler FaceTiming you? No, I don't remember that. How did he call you? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember. But somehow he contacted you and told you what's going on. Yeah, either FaceTime or regular call, but... All right. Know you know anyone named Hack or Hacksaw? Yes. Who's that? Uh, it's just a mutual friend that we all have. Did you see Tyler talking to someone named Hacksaw while he was, well, FaceTiming actually, in, in the car on the way to Mr. Rudolph's home? No. Did you see Tyler even using his phone on the way to Mr. Rudolph's home? <clears throat> no, probably he was, he was probably on his phone doing something, but I don't remember. Did you ever become aware that Mr. Hack saw... What's his real name? Do you know his real name? His real name is Hackshaw. <laughs> real name? His last name is Hackshaw, yeah. What's first name? Uh, John. John Hackshaw? Yeah. Is he the same age as you? Around, yeah. Where does he live? R roughly what area? I prefer not to say. Palm Beach County? Yeah. Okay. Any reason you don't want to say? He has nothing to do with any of this. Right. Do, you, do you ever come aware that somebody may have, if you know, someone invited him to come to 550 Teak Drive before this happened? I have no idea. Did you see him over at that area when this whole incident happened? Not, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Or about after it happened, did you see him in the area? I didn't see Hackshaw for, <laughs> no, no. When you saw Tyler without his shirt on earlier today, you had a little reaction. What was that? You're just jumping all over the place. The timeline. You understand the question? He doesn't. I, I, he doesn't have to stick to a particular timeline. I so I answer the why question. I did that. That's why I did it. You understand the question? I understand the question. You didn't. Why did why, you have a reaction when you saw him without his shirt? Oh, you're talking about that. Yes. Oh, uh, um. No, I didn't have a. Actually, I did have a reaction, but I just, it's just funny seeing the footage. I have never seen the ring camera footage of that night, so that's why I had a reaction. Are you surprised he took his shirt off? I was surprised seeing camera footage of the night. Okay, you, you didn't even realize he took his shirt off when you were there, did I, you? I didn't care. Didn't matter if he was ready to beat someone up or not, you didn't care. Right? Yeah, it didn't matter. That's what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to do. You know, you know, growing up and as a guy, when you take your shirt off, you're ready to fight usually, unless you're going to the beach or taking a shower, right? No secret, right? You could say that. Oh, can you say that? I don't, I'm not going to say that taking your shirt off signifies that you're going to try to fight somebody. In this circumstances, would you agree that's what he was doing or don't agree? I can agree that someone may believe that. That he believed that. Tyler, if you know. Um, no, I'm talking about your client may believe that somebody's trying to fight him with their shirts off. Right, it was pretty cool that night, right? It wasn't hot. Don't remember. Okay. You didn't take your shirt off, did you? Correct. Did you see Tyler having a gun tucked in his waist? No. When he was at the house? No. You didn't see a gun at all is your testimony, right? I did not see any gun. From Tyler? Correct. Right. You know now he had a gun, right? I found that out, yes. Because the police found it, right? Correct. You would agree or disagree, let me ask you this way, that there was punching, kicking, and a lot of screaming, that you guys were fighting loud enough for the neighbors to hear it, right? Um, I would say, I guess, yeah, I agree. You guessing or you agree with Yes, that? I agree. Okay. <clears throat> You would agree that if you, if you didn't defend yourself correctly, you or any you could have been seriously injured, right? You're saying it. Can you repeat your question? Yeah. During this fight, if you didn't defend yourself properly or correctly, you could have been seriously injured. Correct. It wasn't a joke. Correct. A real fight. Correct. And you would agree that anyone involved in this fight, including Travis Rudolph and his brother Daryl Rudolph, 
it would be reasonable for them to believe they could also be severely injured fighting against two guys, the right? The judge calls the speculation lack of personal knowledge. Overruled. You were there. You saw the fight. Don't you agree that they could have easily been seriously injured if they didn't try to defend themselves? Um, if they felt that way, then he shouldn't have started a fight with us. I'm asking you, not how he felt. Do you understand? I don't know how, if that's how he feels. Okay, I'm asking your opinion from watching and being in this fight. Isn't it true that Mr. Rudolph's brother could have reasonably believed he could have been severely injured while fighting against two guys? He could have. I agree, I guess. You agree that he... You said that before in the roof? I don't remember. You want to see it? Show me. Page 134 of the deposition. Taken on July 27, 2021. Page 134, line 18 through 22. said he has a reason to believe that. That would be reasonable for, for them to believe they could have been seriously injured. You said that, right? I'm not saying reasonable. I said he has a reason to believe that. Okay. So you're just taking my words and changing them a little, Objection, right? Judge. Sustain. Next question, please. Okay. This was a serious fight, not, not a little fight uh, that you told the jury earlier, right? No, wrong. It wasn't that serious. Okay. So how could people get seriously injured if it wasn't that serious? Nobody got seriously injured besides when they you got. shot us. Oh, okay. us. all right. <clears throat> you would agree in some areas during this fight it was dark out and it was a little hard to see because things were happening so fast, right? Um... Could you repeat your question? Yeah, where the parts of the play, where this fight took place in many different parts of the, of the in front of the house and the driveway, multiple places, right? Correct. And when it got away from the house, it, it was dark in some areas, right? Correct. And things were happening so fast, correct? Correct. All right. You found out on the way to Mr. Rudolph's home that he had owned guns, right? Yes, correct. Right. And you still went? I was in the car. But he got out, right? He could have said, buddy, let me off. I'm not going with you guys. Right? I could have. Still went, no matter what. Correct. Right? And when the shots rang out, there was only three men in Keyshawn's black Cadillac belonging to his mom, correct? Um, I can't tell you what was happening while there were shots fired, but I can only tell you what happened after the, sh the, fire the shots stopped. Go to page 198, lines 10 through 24. It'll be a deposition dated July 27, 2021, please. Page 198, lines 10 through 24. 198, 10. All right, there was three of us. Do you agree you said under oath previously that there was only three of you in the car when the shots rang out, correct? Correct. And the only one not in the car was Mr. Tyler Robinson, correct? Correct. Thank you very much. Nothing, nothing further, Your Honor. All right, any redirect? Yes, Judge. Okay. Did you accomplish that other task that I yes. set for you? Okay, go ahead. Can I get my documents, Your Honor? What do you want? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Wait a second, sorry.
Judge, as I saw my redirects, it would be requesting permission to publish states 31 to assist in this part. 31, all right. As the video is getting set up, um, I have a few questions. You, um, during your cross-examination, said that the jury can believe whatever it wants to believe. Why did you say that? Honestly, this situation is so personal and just, I lived through this situation, honestly. Um, I'm not here to prove a point or prove a story to anybody. I'm just here to answer the questions. All right. Now, there are moments in the cross-examination that you were asked about various statements that were made. Um, did you recall uh, with perfect clarity those statements that have been given over the course of the two years since this shooting? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Did you remember with perfect clarity all the statements that you've provided over the two years since the shooting? No. Okay. I want to, for instance, go to one of the last things that you were asked about. And this is about who was in the car at the time the shooting started, okay? If I may approach the witness again may. with states, um, I'm sorry, not state, it's a deposition transcript, same page, 198. All right. It should be the same number. Starting from about line uh, 18 or so, if you could read the entirety of the rest of that page. And that's on what page? 198, Judge, Thank of you. the deposition. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. So you were asked by um, Mr. Shiner whether or not there were three of you in the car or not. Do you recall that question on cross-examination? Correct. Uh, I'm sorry, the objection is? Overruled. Do you recall that question? Correct. Okay. Was your answer complete at you knew that Keyshawn, Sebastian, and yourself were in the vehicle? Is my answer complete? Yeah, meaning is that all that you said regarding that issue? Or is there more on that page? I said I also I couldn't track him because there was a bunch of shots going on, so I couldn't completely tell you where he was at. So the answer to the question is you knew they were definitely there, but you couldn't remember where Tyler was because of all the shots coming at you. Exactly. It's... Uh, it's <laughs> well. I'm just trying to clarify. It's this. Neither impeachment nor refreshment, or refreshing recollection. It's an improper question, however, in that it is leading. I'm sorry. No, no. The, the question was a leading question. All right. Try another. Yeah, I sure. <clears throat> okay. So, can you tell us if you knew exactly where Tyler Robinson was when the shot started? I can't. Okay. And why is that? Because I was getting shot at. <laughs> So it could have been next to you. Could have. Could have been outside the car. Could have. Sustained. Do you know if he was next to you? 
I do not know. Do you know if he was outside the car? I do not know. You were asked about whether or not you could see Sebastian and Keyshawn in the front seat. Did you see them prior to the shooting starting? Yes, I did. Okay. And when you all drove away from the location, did anyone open any windows and throw any firearms out of the car? No, they did not. When the car became inoperable, what happened? Did anybody move any firearms that you saw or anything like that? I got out the car. I went to the front side. I checked on Sebastian. I was just looking at him, trying to see, like I wasn't shaking him, but kind of touching him. And after that, I would say a minute later, I seen a police car come by and I just waved him down. So there were no firearms? There was no firearms in the car. You were asked whether or not you later discovered that Tyler Robinson had a firearm. Do you recall that question in Cross? Yeah, I do. And when did you find that out? After um, everything had came out. So this was after the case had started? Exactly. Okay. So you did not know that night? Exactly. Did you know the next day after the shooting? No. I was worried about... Tyler being in a hospital shot up and obviously Sebastian not being here anymore. Okay. You were also asked about um, your telephone and what you did with it and when 911 was called. Do you recall those questions? Correct. Okay. Um, do you have an exact memory of what time or what period of time that the call was made? You're talking about the 911 call? Yes. Um, I don't have a time, but time frame. Mm -hmm. It was on the drive, leaving his neighborhood area complex, whatever. And do you recall if it was you or Keyshawn that was actually dialing 911? I do not recall. I just know Keyshawn was definitely talking on my phone. Do you know what was happening with the phone prior to 911 being called? We were uh, trying to find a hospital. <clears throat> Why did that stop at some point, that trying to find the hospital? Because the car became inoperable. It just pulled over. We, it started failing. Um, you were asked about whether or not you waved down an officer. Do you recall that question? Yes. Okay. Is there any reason why you would have been afraid to wave down an officer? There's no reason at all. Were you concerned about your friend? I was concerned about his life, yes, but as far as trying to hide things, no. I was not. You were asked about looking for cameras when you went to the Rudolph residence. Do you recall that? Yes. Did you look for the cameras? No. They were just there in front of you? Exactly. They were just in front of me. So um, why didn't you just run away when you saw cameras if you were going over there to shoot somebody? Because I wasn't going there to shoot somebody. <laughs> I was going there for a conversation. Did you ever get the impression from anything that happened from the moment you got into Keyshawn's car to when you got to Mr. Rudolph's residence? That's a time period I'm talking about. Did you ever get an impression that you were all going to go shoot up Mr. Rudolph's house or Mr. Rudolph? No. We even had a discussion that we're not bringing any guns. So Judge, this door was open during cross. Well, that's true. You did. So I'm going to allow it. Go ahead. What's quite, what's, repeat the question, please. Yes. Did you ever get the impression that you were going over there to shoot up either Mr. Rudolph or his house? No, I never had the impression because we discussed that we're not bringing any gun. We don't want it to go down like that.
When you said you did not care about Daryl Rudolph, what do you mean by that? You don't care if he lives or dies? Mm, I personally do not care if, about him, his well-being, nothing. Okay. And why? Because he's related to the person who killed my friend for no reason. You were asked about Mr., I guess the brother, Daryl Rudolph's fighting ability. Um, did you get the impression that he could not defend himself at all or was unable to during the fight? I'm n I, no, I never got that impression. It's not like he's disabled or in a wheelchair or something. He was a fully healthy, grown man. Was he punching back? Yes, he was. Was he scratching back? Was trying to get my eyes out. Yes, he was. You were asked about the severity of the fight. Um, were you seriously injured? No, I was not. What about um, Tyler prior to the shooting? No, he wasn't. What about Keyshawn prior to the shooting? No, he wasn't. What about the brother, Mr. Rudolph's brother? No, he wasn't. What about Mr. Rudolph, Travis? No, he wasn't. What about Miss Linda, who was outside as well? She was untouched. <laughs> what about Sebastian? We were all good. Nobody got seriously injured at all. Wasn't that type of fight, right? Exactly. It was a, I don't even know how to explain it. I couldn't hear that. What? It was a regular fight, like, okay. without bruises and black eyes and bloody noses. Just. All right. Um, can I get your assistance for the video? The judge, for the record, states 31 was a surveillance video from the neighborhood. All right. If you could please um, tell me if you can see the image on the screen. Okay. okay. Or do you need to step down to be able to better see, see it? it? Okay. Wonderful. Uh, this particular video, Mr. Lau? Correct. Okay. Do you recognize yourself in this video? Yes. All right. And do you recognize that as being you and your friends on the night of this incident? Yes. All right. Keep watching, please. Are you outside or inside the car at this moment? Outside. Okay. Do you even remember that, Keyshawn moving up a little? Uh, no. So when you were asked whether or not Keyshawn moved up, were you lying when you said you did not recall that? No. Overruled. No, overruled. Now, this is later, according to the video time, after midnight, 10 after midnight, okay? I want you to watch closely.
Could you see that person that was running alongside the car as it was moving? Correct. Okay. You don't know who that was, correct? I do not know. Okay. And at that moment, as far as you know, Mr. Robinson was not in the vehicle? Correct. Okay. Can you recognize the individual that you see there? No. If you could back it up a little bit for me, please. <clears throat> Um, right to here? about where the vehicle is leaving. Yeah. That's us. That was it. Okay. See somebody run off to the side. Another person following. Yeah, that looks like. <laughs> Travis. Okay. Now a third person walking back with Travis. I do not know who that is. <laughs> is it fair to say that when those shots started, they did not stop for at least a while? That is completely fair. Just kept coming. Yeah, maybe generous. <laughs> it felt like forever. Okay. And you could tell there was an impact to your vehicle or no? Um, not like at the moment, but I can, I mean, the car, the glasses, the windshields all shot up and I know the car got shot up a lot. So I could assume that it's messed up. I don't want you to assume anything. Okay, so. Do you remember hearing impact on the vehicle? Yes, yes. When your vehicle became inoperable and it stopped, and you were checking on your friend Sebastian, did it ever occur to you to check his pockets? No, not at all. Did it ever occur to you to search anywhere in that car? No, not at all. Why not? I had no reason to. <laughs> In retrospect, Mr. Lowe, would you have stayed home that night? I don't know. If I knew everything was going to plan out that way, I mean, I don't know. That's a tough question. It's like, I don't know, actually. I just don't like the result of that night. I just I can't tell you if I would stay home or not. Were you expecting guns to get involved? No. Was that a surprise? That was a complete surprise. One moment to confer with co-counsel. All right. Nothing further, Judge. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, take a stand up and stretch break while I talk with the lawyers. Please, any reason why Mr. Lowe can't go on about his day? All right, step down, sir. Watch your step. Stay safe. All right, appreciate it.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put on direct examination only one witness. I am assured that we'll hang on one moment. I'm not sure. Okay, so we're going to put one witness on. I'm assured that he'll take about a half an hour, so we should get out of here shortly. What? 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 You need it? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that too. I just wanted to let you know long range. All right, so we will take a restroom break. Um, how long do you think? Ten? Ten minutes? No more. All right. Ten minutes then. Please be back by 440. Remember to obey the four cardinal rules while you're back there. At least the first three. No research, no discussion, and open mind. All right. Uh, now, well, I'll wait till the jury is out.